Ah, but anyway, we have now appeared, we have materialized on the internet. So, hello my friends, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Tea Time, and wow, have we got a show for you guys today. We have some of the most grizzled veterans of the MMORPG genre here, guys. Okay, we have Brazil, Envy, and of course, the lazy peon himself as well. Brazil DNT, yeah. And, you know, Peon and Envy have something in common, guys, which is kind of a, a part of the reason why we this show is happening today. Uh, they have both relatively recently moved over to Guild Wars 2 uh, from another game. Uh, well, as we, you know, in particular, this would be BDO, Black Desert Online. So, I thought it would be a pretty interesting uh, show. To have them on and talk about some of kind of the experiences and perspectives of a uh, of an MMO player that has recently moved over uh, to Guild Wars 2, and I think uh, a really uh, one question that I think a lot of us want to ask, including myself, is actually how how does Guild Wars 2 look to uh, to a relatively new player, to an, to an outsider, right? It's like while uh, while in BDO, what were your what were your opinions and perspectives? On Guild Wars 2. Why would that uh, envy? I'll go with this. Yeah, let's do I, it. Uh, I didn't even know World v. World was a thing. I mean, I played Guild Wars 2 when it came out, and World v. World was kind of dead. It was just Edge of the Mist, and that was fun. But um, I remember when I came back, Edge of the Mist was dead, and I didn't know even World v. World was like popping off, and there was people doing Zergs and fights and roaming builds. I didn't think anyone was playing it. And so I thought the only large scale PvP out there really was Black Desert Online, which you can call that large scale. Um, until Peon's YouTube video. And then I was like, what? There's queues of people lining up to do mass PvP on Guild Wars? And so I downloaded the game, we got a new account, and was kind of blown away at how people were in there. Yeah. And you know, this this is something that um I think was was definitely kind of revitalized with when when Peon came back to the game because there were there were two uh, two Peon videos right, um, mm -hmm. and uh, the the initial one kind of highlighted perhaps some of the the difficulties of of coming into Guild Wars Two because there was a you know uh, the the initial opinion was like, kind of like what what you know what what exactly is going on here like what what do I do like what's the, what's the whole deal like watch Guild Wars Two shtick right like it's it all seems a little mm -hmm. bit weird right and. Uh, like obviously, like that has now been you know, very much clarified, and now it's it's a, you know, Piano's playing the game a whole lot more. Uh, but uh, I don't know, like, uh, to do you want to expand a little bit on, on Piano? Like, is it uh, is, is the game like not quite portrayed as it should be by the company? And like, when you start playing it, like, what's, what's, well, uh, uh, what's happening? Well, before I like started playing Guild Wars two, I, I honestly thought it was dead coming from Black mm. Desert when it comes to the PvP scene. I thought, and that's like the main thing I was only ever interested in when uh, when I saw this game. I remember seeing, I think it was an Angry Joe video ages ago when the game launched. And he mentioned the world versus world, but back then I didn't have a computer to actually run the game properly. So trying it a few years later, um, I've always, I tried to get into world versus world. But as a new player, you don't know what to look for when it comes to finding players. You jump into world versus world as a new player. And it's this big fucking empty zone, <laughs> Eight, 80 players aside in a fairly big map. You don't really know what to look for when it comes to finding the fights. So I looked up a few guides, figured out how to, uh, how to find the fights, learned that sometimes it is dead at certain times of the day, but there's also the peak times where there's queues. And once I learned that it wasn't dead, that kind of got me back into it. Mm. Okay, uh, kind of, kind of on this, on this uh, same topic with regards to world versus world, actually, and, and kind of the large scale battles. It, it, do you think that's something that uh, Arena and Guild Wars Two in general should should capitalize on more? Because I would say it's probably one of one of the one of the unique selling points of the game. All right, when it when it comes to Guild Wars Two, it's, it's not something that is easy to do well, and I think it's something that Guild Wars Two does do very well. So, uh, is it a little odd that there isn't more? Kind of focus, or uh, you know, trying to get people into this game mode, which is something that is kind of like people want something like this, right? People want a, a large scale, a, a large scale uh, combat MMO, right? With a with a good combat system like the game. So, does, did it did it did it strike you guys as unusual that it wasn't kind of shilled as as hard as 
Uh, perhaps it is another other titles yeah, out there. I mean, I, I agree with Pion. I didn't think people were going to be in there. I thought that everyone, if you're going to play a large scale PvP game, I thought, you know, BDO Siege on Saturday or the Node Wars during the week was it. Um, I know that Pion was streaming them. I was streaming them, um, and I didn't really think that there was other. I mean, I looked at Guild Wars Two categories. It'd be like you know a roaming video, or I remember seeing the raids. I really understand what was going on, but I never really saw it. Um, you know, publicized through Twitch of someone doing a large scale world v world. And I guess there's just not that many world v world streamers too. And I think the way I look up games is like he does, you know, either through a YouTube video or through a Twitch stream. Um, and I don't think that the, uh, the Twitch category for Guild Wars 2 is as large as it could be or should be. Because I definitely think there's a ton of people playing this game that we actually don't realize. I think there's more people playing this game than BDO. And the BDO has got a larger Twitch community. Yeah, by by far, I think. I mean, I see people all day in this game. You can go BDO, you can go... I can go to a stream, ride my horse, go grind, gather, do my thing, and not see someone for three, four hours. Um, this game, I mean, I'm sitting at a jumping puzzle right now, and some guy just walked up and waved at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think ArenaNet should, you know, either, you know, through their partners, through their YouTube content creators, through, um, you know, appropriate use of Twitter, um, or, you know, other ways to kind of reach out to the community to say, hey, like, we actually have large-scale PvP that isn't lagging at an now processing screen that is actually remotely balanced compared to some MMOs. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of classes that are a little out of the ordinary or a little strong, but, I mean, you can go and, uh, I mean, Peon and I both played against Mystic, even the nerfed Mystic, and it's like, it's, it's like a warrior in Berserk mode 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. oh, there you go. There you go. I there think, you go. Um, yeah, go I on. think with World vs. World, it's it's a piece of content that I'd describe as repeatable content. Unlike a lot of what the Guild Wars 2 developers are making nowadays, they're making a lot of story stuff, a lot of PvE stuff. You kind of do it once, and th mm. there, there's the thrill gone, essentially. But the good thing about World vs. World and PvP content in general is because you're fighting other players, the players are the content. And yeah. if you can create a competitive, a somewhat competitive environment where that kind of stuff is incentivized, then people are just going to want to do it all day. Mm. Whereas PVE content, I wouldn't really say it's got the same appeal. I got mm. streamed 11 hours of World of World on Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely repeatable for sure. Yeah. Well, if, if that's, uh, you know, that, that's a really interesting perspective. It's, it's one that I think quite a lot of people... Uh, share, but the the other the other side of of, of Guild Wars Two is that there is a, like a very large portion of the uh, player base is is fairly casual, right? It's kind of like you log on and play a little bit, and then just hop out again afterwards, right? So, what is there is there any way you think that? Well, for a start, do you think that the World vs. What is already kind of suited to that uh, kind of play style, or do you think there needs to be adjustments um, to kind of make it? I'll work a little bit better, so you can. It's more of like a dip in, dip out kind of thing with regards to world versus world. And I, how, how do you balance that with a competitive environment as well? Because there's quite a lot of players in the game who I would say are not particularly interested in competition. They're just more interested in just kind of logging on, having a bit of fun with some friends, and then just logging out again. Um, like, do you, is it is it a reward thing? Because I'm I'm not I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure if how apparent it is uh, to you guys, but the rewards in World vs. World have been lackluster basically since launch, and it, it used to be a lot worse uh, as well, actually. Yeah. It's recently been, um, well, relatively recently, been increased massively, uh, actually, uh, and it, it's probably still the least rewarding game. I'd, it's a fairly pretty... It's pre pretty grindy. Uh, for, for example, like, it's only recently you could even properly get ascended trinkets in, in World vs. World, really, uh, well, or easily accessible them, it, and, and armor as well, right? And I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a tricky one. And, it, and it's inherently a very difficult game mode to um, yeah. uh, balance the competitive nature of it with the rewards, right? Because uh, it previously, uh, the player base have come up with some fairly naughty ideas with basically just like farming each other for a massive amount of money. Uh, and uh, and obviously the arena don't want to completely obliterate their own game. So it's difficult to kind of uh, incentivize that competitive nature uh, uh, while keeping it um, friendly uh, to a more uh, casual audience, right? Because uh, uh, the, the trouble with... The trouble with stuff like, you know, competition, is that it can often be exploited for, 
easy rewards if the rewards are too good. And otherwise, um, it's kind of like you have to compete for you have to comp you have to compete for competition's sake. And that is, you know, some sometimes it's, that's a little bit of a tough sell to people, especially uh, with a, with a slightly more casual audience than I would say most other MMOs. So I, I, I was wondering if you guys have some some insight on that as, as to what they, they could do with that. Like, is it just a kind of, um, uh, do do we need to try and funnel more players into the game mode? They try it, they, they, they go in there for a bit, they say, hang on, this is really fun. This is a lot of fun, actually. And they keep going. Uh, does it need to be developed more? Do we need, because um, there is a rework coming up soon. I'm sure you guys are aware about the alliances mm -hmm. uh, that'll be coming, uh, well, at some point, uh, but uh, do we need to see more maps? Do we need to see some kind of variation on the game mode in addition to like the, no the where the normal world versus world is? Because I mean, there are two maps, but the second one didn't work out so well. Uh, but you know, it's it, oh, that, that, there's, <laughs> a, there's a map. I I hate that map. <laughs> I I, I it would be a good update if they removed it from the game. I hate it. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I think most. Most, the majority of the world versus world audience is certainly um, probably very satisfied with Alpine, right? With the Alpine yes. one, it's a very fine map, uh, and Eternal Battlegrounds, of course. But d does the uh, the static nature of world versus world kind of make it appear less alive to the other player base? To kind of follow up on on what I was just saying there, like, well, what it, what are you guys' thoughts on the previous I think, uh, um, stuff there? I think there's a few problems with world versus world. Uh, I think. First being, as from the point of view of a new player, is it's not great at teaching you like how everything works. I think you kind of need to go to YouTube and look up guides for that. I think, and then once you've got a basic understanding, um, it should it gets a little bit better. I think the game should maybe convince new people to join squads if possible, like open tags, because it seems like people don't understand that a lot of new people, they don't understand the importance of joining a squad. Like, you get boons if you join a squad. You can see where people are, better communication, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that'd be good. Um, something that's annoying from the point of view of a new player is, depending on your class, the world versus world build that you go for, if you just want to get, like, exotics or something, depending on the class, it's a pain in the ass to get that set of stats to actually be viable at your class. So that's something I really don't like, because some things you need, like Marauders mm. or the Path of Fire Ascended stuff, right? And there's not really... It's hard to get the exotic versions of those stats. Mm. So that sucks for new players if they're playing one of those classes. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point, actually. Yeah. I don't know if I I don't know if I agree with that, but I also kind of do at the same time. Because like the Marauder thing, like there are some weird stat combos that I think people don't know about out of fractals that give you like a little bit of vitality on top of like power. It's like it's called like Berserkers and Valkyries. It doesn't have like a specific combo. And then you can also mix like Berserkers and Valkyrie stuff or Berserkers and Knights, but that's also kind of confusing. And people may or may not even think about that to begin with, and it gives you a similar result. It's just, there, there are weird ways to do it, but there are kind of, I guess, more direct ways, like with the Marauder stat or whatever, if that's what you want. Yeah, I know there's like ways around it, but from the point of view of a new player, it's kind yeah. of annoying how there's some classes where you can literally just go, by a full set of berserkers and others you just need to jump through a bunch of hoops and this is before you even know if this is a class that you're going to enjoy playing like you just want to try out the class in, in world vs world and see if you enjoy it and you need to go through all of those hoops for some some stats to even get a viable character really mm, yeah you know what i mean that's fair, and as uh, as Chat and Brazil are saying, you know there are, of course there are alternatives, right? Like you can play. I, I, I don't know. Suppose you suppose you don't. A, a, a great example of this is Trailblazer, right? Like Trailblazer is a pain in the ass, right? Uh, or Celestial, if you wanted Celestial. to play Scourge, right? Okay, you you can play other stuff. You can play stuff. You can play some like dire stats. You can play like a weird mixture of, of if you can't like Celestial is a massive pain. Like you can get some like Viper or Grieving and stuff like that. Like oh, you know you you can mix it like that, but you know what what 
what the community is saying, like the player-defined meta, yeah, it's, it's sometimes quite annoying, quite irritating again. Yeah, that's actually something I've never considered. Actually, that's a, that's a really interesting point. And there, there aren't the, the weird thing is, is that there aren't uh, these exotic sets on the trading post, right? It, um, right. it is a little unusual. Like, why can't you buy a, a set of exotic minstrel armor, right? I think I think it discourages some people. Like, we have a couple guys in my guild that are, you know, we're all new. I mean, like, not all of us. Like, ninety-eight percent of us are. It's like, oh, I want to play this class. We need this type of gear. It's mm. like, oh, well, I have to go through this, this, and that to get that. I'm not going to play that class. And they don't even want to roll level or try the class because they know that the hurdle to get the gear. And it yeah. may just be a triumphant reward box. It may be, yes, you need to make the charge courts or whatever it is. But because of that, they pick a different meta or a different class or a different role that they may not fully enjoy just because of that hurdle. And I guess, like you said earlier with the balance, you need to have enough of a casual appeal that the you know the random person can come in and say you know what i can hop in worldly world for an hour i get some cool cosmetic stuff maybe some you know some money some gear uh get an exotic set and hop out but then you also need to have enough of an appeal for competitive sake for competition like right now my group we're in t1 um on na and um it's blackgate uh csros and sbi and you know, somebody wins. I don't. I actually, I don't know. What if you get? What do you get for first place for the week? Is there any reward? Is it just moving up? Is that it? Yeah, I have no idea. It's just the position changes in the That's, world. Okay, so like in BDO, like say Peon and I are in opposing guilds and we're um, in a siege trying to take, you know, each other's towers. Like say in Serendia, which is like an open siege or no castle. If Peon is a wizard and he is just going off and he is just farming my guild. Um, after a hundred kills, he will get um, a title. Gosh, I remember, what's the title called, Theon? Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. And then he gets a glowing aura for a week. And then he can turn it on or off. It's a title. You turn it on, the character gets a glowing aura. Very similar to how the bolt legendary goes around your character, but it's red. And then at 180, it's another color and another title. And at 300, it's like the rarest one. And I think I've only seen that a handful of times. But it encouraged people to try hard, to actually really give an effort. But then it was such a cool effect. It brought people to Siege and mm. Node War who had no idea what it was just because they're like, I want to have that yeah. badass cosmetic tile. And I mean, this is Fashion Wars too. Like it is Fashion Wars Online. So if the devs can figure out a way to give a fluff incentive that mm. looks good for either a monthly or a week, you don't, you don't want to burn out drivers. You don't want to burn yeah. people out. But make it a, easy enough attainable for, you know, like if Teapot Squad and your guys, you're going to go for it, you're going to get it. But if you're casual, you don't really care, you don't have to get it. But then again, also make it obtainable to where if Peon's going to go solo or I'm going to go solo and I just jump in squads like he was saying, if I try hard that week, I might be able to get it. But I, I don't know what it would be. Maybe a temporary title, maybe I don't want to say seasons because I think my chat said that this game did seasons and it wasn't a healthy thing for Worldly World, but... Yeah, it may, it may, it may, it made people know life really hard. Uh, yeah, when the seasons that. came out, people went a bit crazy and burned out pretty savagely mm -hmm. uh, uh, when they did seasons. But you know, there, there are there are some ways around that, right? Potentially with mm -hmm. some diminishing diminishing rewards as 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 things go on. You know, so what, what, you know, well, I mean, do you think a system like uh, you guys are familiar with the automated tournaments in in PvP? Correct. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, there. That you can, there's like gizmos there. Like you can get it. You win if if you win the monthly tournament, you um, uh, you you win like a special effect thingy, right? Like doing do, right. something like that would be good then. Or like, absolutely. Or like, access like to an exclusive lobby, right? Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Cinder uploaded a video today of him doing Worldly World, and he appeared to me, and I'm watching it, and he has like the crown. I just learned about the crown, and that's kind of like what we're talking about in a mm. sense. But I mean, that's very very difficult to obtain. Yeah. Only a few people can obtain that. Uh, or pay for that. Kidding. Um, well, no, but, people uh, have done that. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, not all of us are going to go out there and do that, right? But if you make something more obtainable for the average player, mm. like, if you said, like, it may, it may not be to be that fancy. It could just be, you know, a guy sounds like, this person does worldly world. They are, you know, a veteran or, or something. Um, I, you know what I'm saying? Just a little bit of enough to say, you know what, I don't know shit about World of World, but I know that looks cool. It's like the Beetle. I don't know anything about PvE in this game, but I'm going to go get that Beetle because that mount is legit. So can we make something cosmetic? Can we make something functional? Can we make something cool out of World of World that'll pull people to it that are like, I don't know anything about this, but I want that.
Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's that's exactly all we need, right? I mean, there, there we was... we need to remove the desert world yeah. rust world map. <laughs> yes, agreed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Oh, that, that map was such a disaster on so many levels. Mm. Do you, Card, Card pointed out, do you guys know about the, like, world versus world exclusive armor skins? Uh, Have you seen no. those? So no. there's like a... The, the cultural ones you get off armor? No, they're like... With the tentacle they, wings. They, yeah. yeah, you need two K oh, rank. Yeah. You need two K yeah, rank. Yeah, they they're pretty cool looking, but it also takes like three and a half years to get them because they're so light. Like <laughs> of playing like long. eight hours a day. It, it does. doesn't take that long. Wait, man, no, it doesn't. I'm in Worldly World. Where would I? Is it the skirmish vendor? Uh, uh, you might be able to preview. You could probably just preview it in the bank. I think it's called Mist Forged, and the like super crazy one is Sublime Mist Forged. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, pretty you, you can find it in the in the skirmish vendor. Yeah, the, the oh, yeah. they they PM'd it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's oh, it's wow. uh, it's it's like the the Wolf of Sword prestige armor. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, it, and it's it's a bit of a grind. Uh, for example, the legendary back piece is five hundred mm. world versus world rank. Uh, what what rank are you at right now? Um, Envy actually. I'm one eighty nine. I've been no hyping like crazy. Yeah, I mean it's a little bit of a grind, uh, but you you know it's not too bad really. Right. It's not that bad, um, and yeah, you can get you can get your big shiny back piece at five hundred, and then for two thousand, um, I don't know, it's like, it's like it's like a year of playing a fair amount, like a year, year and a half right. of playing a fair amount, which is probably a little bit long term. Like as you as you guys were saying, right, have something a little more short term, even something temporary. Temporary is a really interesting idea, actually, like a temporary title mm -hmm. for uh, for how for for performance, right? Like especially if it's fluff, right? Uh, because yeah. I, I think that's what can be good here, like fluff, something that the creators the, the, the casuals mm, and also. Yeah. Like, if us four are like a hardcore guild, but we still want to go for that, like that's we're just we're gonna get it on the way. But like mm. you know, we said there's people that'll be in your stream that they don't care for worldly world, but if they go to Peon's YouTube and they're like, "Yo, how did you get that title? How'd you get that look?" It's like, "Oh, you got to get level 100 worldly world." They're like, "Well, you know what? I'm gonna figure out a worldly world." And you bring people in that would normally be there, and it's the same way you bring people in the PVE with mounts and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and that also prevents the manip the reward manipulation angle. Like, if it's just a fluff title, you can't abuse it to like farm other players to to right. you know, ruin it and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a really um, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. I think this is we can we can save all of us as well. Uh, but to, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's come back to um, kind of the desert borderland. So uh, what uh, do we need to see? Well, yeah, the topic of the desert borderland. Do we need to see a new a new map? Does does world versus world need new maps potentially, like new mechanics to kind of keep uh, keep going? I'll be you know, uh, Peon, do you want to do you want to talk talk a little bit about that? Like, what's uh, what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't know if a new map's super necessary. I just don't think they should add super big ones like the desert one. It's just too big, dude. You die mm. once, yeah. like a, a certain area, and it's like a five to ten minute run. As soon as the commander switches to that map, I'm off for the night, <laughs> for yeah. example. The thing with Eternal Battlegrounds, which makes it quite fun, is it's like the smallest of the world versus world maps. So you die, it doesn't take too long to regroup and get back in the fight. Whereas the other ones, that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. But there's a one it being the biggest issue. So I guess if they wanted to add like some more small world versus world maps, then sure. That'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with, with, yeah, so uh, but you, you don't think that it's need it's necessary to kind of keep it fresh or make the game mode look because um, a, a lot of the thing a lot of the time with uh, when you when new players kind of flock to something it's because like something has happened like something's new something's changed like uh, a great example of this is when they reworked the rewards in PvP uh, everyone everyone was playing PvP right for for that mm -hmm. uh, for that season kind of killed it off afterwards because they uh, they just like slashed the rewards into oblivion which was kind of funny uh, but again when um when the world versus world skirmish rework happened which uh, um uh, you know the the skirmish chests you get uh, you get the tickets and stuff like that uh, that didn't used to exist that's a relatively recent system that's been added yeah. to the game um when they released that everyone was, boom the reward, there were the spvp reward track is new uh no 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 the, no 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 the world versus uh you know the um you know you get pips in what the pip right. system in the pip system in world versus world is new okay relatively cool, relatively it. new and uh, okay, no, the reward tracks of all you i think it's like a year and a half two years oh uh, is it even that long 
Ain't I don't know. Probably, probably about that, yeah. It's probably something like that about, about a year. So it's relatively new. Like, it wasn't like that at launch. Uh, when mm. that was implemented, um, people flocked to the game mode, right? Like the, the queues were actually insane. You guys think you're seeing queues right now? There was like a hundred queue on every borderland, man. Like, even on low servers. Like, oh, jeez. Yeah. Like, seriously, everyone was going crazy. crazy. Everyone went crazy uh, for a little while, uh, just flocking to the game mode, just to try and farm the rewards, right? Um, the trouble was, is that um, the, the rewards were very long term. Uh, to, even to get the back piece actually required a fair amount of grind, actually, uh, because diamond chest is actually fairly tricky to get. Um, in uh, the diamond skirmish chest in World vs. World is pretty tricky uh, to get. It requires a fair amount of playtime. Uh, so they, it, people kind of go, ah, uh, uh, oh, I can't do it, man. It's too hard, too much grind. Uh, they, they, you know, the 2k rank barrier, even the 500 for the back piece was kind of tricky. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of drove people away. But yeah, if, if it had been more short term, that would certainly have been, uh, been good. Uh, but uh, yeah, with any luck, when we see alliances um, come round, that should hopefully reinvigorate the game mode a little bit. Uh, I think but, something that would reinvigorate yeah. it even more, which is something they could do when alliances come out, is like do leaderboards for the top mm. performing guilds and like kill to death for each alliance. They obviously can do it now without the alliance system, but mm -hmm. maybe when they bring that to the game, they could have some leaderboards. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sort of prestige is really going to drive the competitive side of it, right? Like the bragging rights, that sort of thing. Um, when it, and, and your leaderboards would certainly be. I think it's pretty important, especially if they plan on kind of pushing the competitive aspect a little bit and like adding some kind of uh, reward for doing well. I think I believe they are looking at that as well. Actually, just um, just out of interest, I think um, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Ben has said something to that effect that they are looking on again another little bit of a a reward restructuring on top of that as well for for doing well and kind of bringing back. Uh, that kind of pride of, of you know who you're playing with like which alliance you're playing with it is right. because like server pride is is dead as a door now right now uh it's not really um <laughs> it's not really unless much of a thing unless you're maguma unless you're maguma yeah <laughs> then it's a big deal to be on maguma yeah everyone hates you yeah, yeah. <laughs> can be the villains the villains the, of, of Guild Wars 2. It, it's the goon server. I don't know the if goons. any of you guys yeah. have encountered goons in other games, but it's the uh, we, we encountered them. One of their servers swapped over to our matchup last week, and uh, I had enough siege built on me to take SMC. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I played on Maguma for a little while, and essentially what happened, we pushed green all the way across the map, took their keep, and then built siege out in front of their spawn and just <laughs> siege them at spawn for two and a half hours. Yeah. And then let them come back and did it again later. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, on the uh, on the kind of the reward and competitive nature, is, is that sort of thing, uh, do you think maintaining like a level of uh, the player base kind of caring about the game and caring about winning, like caring about how it goes. Is that Im important with with regards to how uh, how um, the game mode sustains itself? Because yeah, I, I would yeah. certainly say so. Like this was a little sad to me. Like, yeah, I mean, I kind of um to to honor, to, be, to a certain extent, I kind of got on the world versus world train a little late. Uh, by the time right. I actually started playing properly, everyone was kind of everyone was very cynical, very jaded. Uh, <laughs> in fact, one of the first conversations I have I had about world versus world with. Um, you guys know uh, Roy, uh, Roy. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I was in Discord with some of his lads, and it was, it was very salty, very cynical, uh, very jaded. It was great, and uh, it was that was kind of like when I started playing, got into the game mode. Uh, so like th things of um, things of advanced from there, and the, there's a lot of um, a lot of salt about the place. But you know, it's, I think uh, a lot of World vs World players are like that. Like when I look back on like b before I played the game. A few years ago, there was that there was a guild called Red Guard and stuff, mm. and it it seemed like a few years ago, World vs World was just more fun. It seemed like the uh, it it wasn't about condi damage and condi cleanse and stuff, wasn't it? It was more about power and stacking mm. your buffs because you couldn't really like lose your buffs, so you could blob bust and stuff. Mm. Dude, that just looks so fucking fun. I really wish I played this game at that point because it just looks way more fun than what world vs world is currently and you have yeah. a lot more competitive guilds because just the act of taking out 
double your numbers with very few just because you're outplaying them. Just so fun. That's the reward in itself. And I, th- I know a lot of people that did leave the game and went to BDO after that happened, after that, that kind of got stopped. Yeah. That's as the game has progressed, right? Like certainly in in the base game, um, it was almost paced a lot slower to a certain extent. Like now, everything is extremely fast, right? Um, you have stuff like Spellbreaker, like you caught in a bubble, you're dead, right? Uh, or you know, there's there's ten scourges and they all just drop like the mega corrupt bomb. Like, oh, I've got no boons anymore, right? You know, there, yeah. there's there's a lot of stuff like that that is extremely fast, right? And and. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that this game has historically struggled with, is Mm. maintaining a balance between all three game modes, right? Um, So stuff like Scourge scales just to an absurd degree, right? It it just Mm. scales so strongly. Like, stacking them is, is very good. Uh, same with stuff like Revenants, like having Warriors is amazing, like stuff with 10 targets, like massive AoE cleave is just crazy, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and again, when you load up your Guardians with Minstrel stats, they're spamming boons really hard. Something that was introduced in Path of Fire was just like mass reapplication of boons and conditions. Everyone always kind of complains about the Condies, right? But the, the thing is, if you didn't have that spam of Condi and boon removal, I, Stuff like Firebrand would just be off the chain. There's like a there's like a pretty big argument that Firebrand is like more busted than Scourge, especially at this point. Actually, um, it, it's just uh, application is absolutely off the charts right now, and that's why they've the, the countermeasures are there as well. Like the mass boon removal, the mass uh, the mass condi spam, the mass snares is because there's just um, there's so many ways that the the other side has to deal with it that were both um, introduced at that time, and it the the same was kind of true in in Heart of Thorns um, as mm-hmm. well. Like when that expansion dropped, suddenly there was a lot more aids, right? Just out of nowhere, they, they just added more aids to the game. And with the reworks to, with them, um, uh, when they reworked a lot of the specializations, they added a lot more kind of punch to a lot of these things that made it, um, that accelerated the game a little bit. Because, well, there, were, there was a time when things were very, very slow, like especially in World vs. World. Like back, uh, back, a, a little while ago, like you'd be running around with like 25 stacks of stability, permanent resistances, permanent everything. This was like the boon share, the boon share oh, method days. And this is, yeah, yeah, this was with the old. Super boost. Yeah. <laughs> this was, well, there's, uh, I, I, have, you, have you guys have played any Mesmer? A little bit of, bit of Mesmer? Mm hmm. So there, there's, a, a, there's an ability called Signet of Inspiration, right? Which copies boons. Every boon on you, it copies it to your allies. Right, and it applies it to yourself again. I before it would copy every stack for the full duration. So if you, if you had twenty five stacks of stability, it would give your entire group twenty five stacks of stability. Um, and if you <laughs> if you twenty <laughs> yeah, if you if, if you had a minute, it, suppose that you had um like, like a, five is it, great. <laughs> Like five is like you're doing swell with five stacks of stab twenty five. I mean, yeah. so, there, so, there were a lot of other problems. Like I play Firebrand in World of World, so I know like when I see a couple stacks of stab, I'm like, oh, I can walk through all this. Twenty five stacks of stab, I'm walking through just like what? Come at me. So, yeah, you know something I'd love to see uh, added to World of Us. So I don't know, it'll never happen. But um, like a legacy mode or something mm. where you can only use core builds. Not only would that be great at getting like free to play players into the game, but it'd also bring the veterans back and it yeah. would uh it'd be like it'd be pretty chill. I'd really like that. Similar to how they did like the no downstate week, have a legacy week. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Something that reminded me of that when I came to this game is right before that happened. Um <clears throat> I was really big into WoW for a short st- uh time with the Mythic Plus dungeon. I think it's the only thing World of Warcraft has going for it and the system I think it's awesome. It's every week the change. It's very similar to how fractals work, mm. but there's an API with websites like Raider IO and um, there's another one. But you can look up. I can look up Teapot. I'm like, oh, Teapot's got this score. Oh, wow, he's got this dungeon at that time. What if you could apply that with the API through this game in the worldly world? Maybe with with the alliance system. It's like, oh, wow, look at this guild. Mm. These are their members. This is what they run. Oh, wow, these guys got this KD. Man, these guys are just stomping during these skirmishes. They take, you know. If there's a way you can kind of <clears throat> use a third-party site that's approved with an API system, to kind of you know make it more competitive for the people who really want to try hard. Because in that game, like there's people who were doing Mythic Plus Keys dungeons. They're such a high level; they were getting things down to like the second, and just 
pinpoint accuracy, and it was really impressive. And it made people get into Mythic Plus. They could track their stats, and they, they got the addiction. Oh, i got to get this dungeon in time. Oh, i got to get that one in time. Or maybe you know some sort of way to bring that either into Fractals or into SPP or into World v. World, because we have the API in place. Um, I'm sure the, the uh, community has something that could build a team or a system. I, I don't know. It's just a really, really cool system, and I like how you can look people up, look teams up. Um, and I think that that system is just it's a home run. That if other games could adopt or make it similar into their game, like it'd be huge. And as well, um, another game that could do some well in BDO, there are small events to where if you just go kill a mob, you have a very low chance of getting like a token. And with that token, you can either buy certain items, gear, whatever. So what if they're trying to bring SPP, you know, either ranked or unranked? And you have a chance on winning or killing someone with an SVP of getting loot. And that loot could be a token where you can buy cosmetics, you could buy a title, you could buy mount skins, whatever, to encourage people to go into those queues. Um, that's another idea. Or bring people to World of the World again. You know, say that in World of the World, there's a low, you have a 0.1% chance of killing a player of getting a special loot bag, which contains this currency, which you can go to the spender and, you know, buy a certain skin that looks really cool. And that's the only way to get it. And it's temporary. It's a season. Everybody wants to hop in Worldly World to give that a shot. Just do it for a week, you know, so you don't mess up the balance of Worldly World, but enough to bring people in to get them a taste. Hmm. Yeah. I will... <laughs> can, I, can I just... We, uh... we, we had something like that a while back. Mm -hmm. It was for the beta access for Heart of Thorns and mm -hmm. did not go over too well. But yeah, Go ahead, Peon. Sorry. Most, most of the stuff we've been talking about is, like, fairly niche stuff and i'm sure there's people in the chat thinking oh that's probably like 0.1 percent of the player base do world versus world i bet most people don't even do fractals and m maybe you're right but I, I think it's really important for an mmo to make content for the veteran players because once you're a casual when you're only a casual for a certain period of time right hmm. you go through all of the casual content all of the uh the story stuff and you, you kind of need something repetitive that's designed to be done repetitive to keep you playing this is the hardcore stuff when you look at world of warcraft in vanilla you've got like nax ramus for example one percent of the player base saw that but that type of content having things that is there that not many people will see is really important for an mmo because it always gives people something to aim for even if they will never reach it mm. i think that's something that guild wars 2 needs a lot more of Hmm. That you know th this uh, this kind of segues really nicely into uh, an interesting topic, uh, and that's kind of regards to accessibility. And and I hate to use this word, guys. I really do. But and entitlement, right? Okay. Uh, the, the sad thing is, is uh, uh, I'm going to use raids as an example. Here. Like raids are, are a great example of this. Um, as you guys are probably aware, the raids in this game are ten man and. They're not particularly difficult, right? They're, they're pretty tricky, right? You know, if you're a new guy coming into, yeah, you're gonna die a lot, right? But it, it's not mythic WoW, right? Like, let's be honest right. here, okay? Let's be brutally honest. But you know, there is a barrier to it's, entry there. It's, it's heroic. It's heroic level, I would say. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to be able, you know, you have to know the mechanics and you know, be able to slap the boss a fair bit and and, and be able to carry your weight to a certain extent. But whenever raids come up and whenever they're mentioned. There is a bit of an uproar, okay, right, guys? Uh, people don't like the fact that they can't get those rewards. They think it's elitist. They think it's elitist. They think it's toxic. They think that people like me in Brazil are evil, okay? Uh, and they they feel like they shouldn't have to have know how to do a rotation. They shouldn't have to learn the mechanics, right, in order to get these rewards. And th this is more prevalent than you might believe, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and how... How do Arena get around that? Like, do they need, do they just ignore it and say, get good, okay? Uh, and just say, nope, this is, these are exclusive rewards. You gotta get good or buy it because you can buy raids. You know, talk to Yummy Sauce, right? Or okay. do they add some kind of easy mode? Like, do they do, do some kind of easy mode or do they, just, do they just tell them just to be quiet and just, yeah, shh. Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's the correct approach there? Because there, there is a bit of a, there's a bit of a ruckus cause whenever, whenever there's, particularly exclusive rewards uh especially in pve actually um well with regards to raids that is like they're not them um, that they're they're a, they're a subject of some vitriol shall we say what do you think Pian? 
Um, I feel like the entitlement isn't entirely the player's fault in this game because everything, in, a lot of things in Guild Wars 2 compared to other MMOs, a lot of things come easy. So it, it kind of, the way the game's designed puts a bit of a lazy mentality on you. Even, even I feel lazy in this game a lot of the time compared to other MMOs. Um, so I think it would be very hard for ArenaNet to change that mentality. And in a game where a lot of things are very accessible, for them to have something that's not accessible, if you know what I mean. Mm. I, d- I don't know the solution to that. They'd be trying to undo years worth of the mindset that they've ingrained in the player base. The culture. Yeah. Mm. So is the answer to add kind of uh, like a, a ramping difficulty scale then? Like this is something that has been talked about. You do, do we need to see fractals that are like a stepping stone to raids? Like that have raid-like mechanics uh, that kind what of prepare you, uh... you for, for the raids? Yeah, have that. Do, well, you, yeah, you have challenge modes. You have two of them. But honestly, like some of the challenge modes are arguably harder than the raids. <laughs> yeah, but there's a normal mode that gets you ready for the challenge mode. Yeah, but they're really easy. Face roll. Yeah. Someone in chat has the answer, and it's a very simple one. Guild Wars 3. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Guild Wars 3! Okay, so what you're saying is, is that we need to cash out on the mount skins, new engine, new game, start yeah. again, hardcore only, world versus world, no casuals, get them out. Okay, All right, that seems good. I think, I think you need to do, um, this is an older game with by far the worst engine in MO history. Uh, Star Wars Old Republic did a story mode, and then a hard mode, and then a nightmare mode, I believe is what it was. But the story mode was so easy. You really could just, you could play your spec totally wrong. You didn't even, you barely needed a healer. You could solo heal it. But it lets you see the cuts. It kind of gave you, you know, that first, that first little touch of raiding. And then there wasn't really enraged timers. It was, you could mess it up and still kill it. But then when you went to the next difficulty, it, it was there. You had to know your rotation, but it allowed people who, just wanted to see the story, you know, mm. wanted to see the book. But, but to what Peon was saying with Max Ramis, there were cutscenes and there were bosses and there were hidden bosses that you did not see and could not see unless you did the harder difficulty. And the rewards were only in the harder difficulty. So say right now we did, um, Teapot last week, we did some runs together, uh, like Slug, I can't, Slug I can't remember his name. Sloth? Sloth so. Sloth, Sloth Sword. So say like, we did that boss, he drops Ascended Gear, he drops stuff for Legendary Armor and all that. That's, that's pretty good drops, right? You know, say you increase that, but then below it, you have an easier version for him to where you can't Epidemic that your friends that are the worm. <laughs> um, but you're not going to get Ascended, you're going to get maybe a token to help you get Ascended Gear, and maybe just mostly exotic. So it's a way for people to kind of give it a shot and look at it and say, wow, this is pretty cool. But, you know, like, keep things from them. Make, give them something to work for. It's where there's better gear, there's better... You, know, you need to have that elitist. You have to have elitist, because then you see the person who's like... Like, the best feeling in the game, Guild Wars 2, is your first time you see a legendary. I remember someone walked by, and I was like, what is that dude wearing? I want that. And then you set that goal, and you're like, all right, I'm going to go grind for that. Um, and I think if you have... You know, if someone sees you guys in Lion's Arch, and you have some ridiculous gear, and they've done only the story mode, and they're like, you know what? i got to get better at raiding. I want to get into, you know... Um, not mythic level, what would they call it in this game, but another tier. And then that would grow um, you know, the rating culture within the game. And I agree, the game doesn't have a hard grind. I'm come from BDO, man. I, I've, I've had friends do 36 hour grind sessions to get a level or a gear. I mean, my buddy Curves is in stream. I know that man went crazy for hitting 62. So, you know, there are players that do want the, you know, the ridiculous hard entitled grind. And there are players who just you know, they work 50 hours a week. They just want to pop on for a little while and see a little bit and call it a day. Hmm. Yeah. And that's, that, that's certainly all, you know, kind of, well, it's certainly what a lot of the hardcore community wants, certainly in when it right. comes to Guild Wars 2. This is the thing that's been asked for a long time, right? The, this sort of, um, you know, like, the, this sort of thing like, with regards to the prestige, right? But uh, th- this kind of, is related to a bit of a sore topic, okay? And that comes to resource allocation and content release. Now, uh, I imagine that people have come to you guys' streams and YouTube and complained about this, but it takes a little while. It takes a little while for ArenaNet to release stuff sometimes and develop things. Uh, for example, we've been 
you know, 2v2 tournaments have been supposed to be coming uh, for PvP for a, a fairly long time now. Uh, the last Raid Wing was in November, right? And when we say Raid Wing, we mean like two bosses and two events. Um, the last Hard Mode Fractal is nearly a year old. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just, when the, the issue with an easy mode would be how could um, Arena Net justify the, that amount of work? Like it, it would probably delay it even more, right? It would it would delay the situation even more, and like that that raises a question. Like, well, is do you guys do you guys think that Arena Net is allocating the resources correctly? Like the the game modes that consistently don't get developed uh it, well is 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 world versus world right like that is being that is happening right that is um that is happening now but stuff like pvp uh stuff like um uh like uh, like hard mode fractals raids it does seem like there's a bit of there's a bit of foot dragging whereas like it, it's it's a bit of Whereas like a lot, so a lot of the resources seems to go into stuff like mount skins fluff. and like the gem store, like fluff, the cosmetics that you can buy uh, in the cash, which is fine, right? I mean, I certainly not going to criticize the business model of this game. Like that's another topic entirely, but I think it's very fair. Uh, but it, it just seems like the amount of actual content, especially in repeat, especially in a repeatable sense, right, is is a bit is is just a bit. Uh, it's 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 a little lacking, right? It's a little lacking. They don't seem to be targeting the players who are going to be playing every day. They seem to they seem to be satisfied with keeping, like, you know, contrary to what what Pion would say, they seem to be happy with keeping their players casual, right, and and not kind of ascending to the glorious throne of elitism, right? And uh, so, I, is that a good approach? Do you guys think? Or does that need to be changed? Is that necessary? Or is that fine? Like, do we just do we just sit back and wait for Guild Wars Three? Is that what do we do? Hard one. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I don't know enough about um, you know game development or resource allocation into uh, my background is medical software sales. So I've been in the software industry for years, but. Uh, you know, how difficult is it to say, you know, you have the sloth balls, how, how hard is it to do another instance of it, pull a few mechanics out and change, um, you know, the experience and, you know, kind of gate it off um, to where, you know, you have, like, I would love to see it to where I watch you right on stream. I'm a viewer. I'm a fan. You know, this guy, Teapot, he's hilarious. He's got a fun chat. I'm learning. I want to get my buddies. I mean, we my guild's 350 people in three weeks. We brought a crew over here. We Anyone yeah. else can do that that has a group. If you have a community, you can do what we did. And I'm mm. sure other communities have. But to me, and to get all of us to go into raiding, I don't think we would kill many bosses with just going in fresh. And that's that's the raids are a bit difficult. And that's good, though, because that gives you something to work forward to. But I think it would be cool if there was, you know, kind of the entry raid to get you in, to get you hooked, you know, the gateway raid. And then now you're in, and then you really want to learn your rotation and push. Um, I don't know how hard that is to allocate, but I think it would be a great thing. I always think those those little it, something lets you try it. Because I've gone into worldly world, I thought I'd be great on a thief in worldly world, and I'm in a blob on a thief, <laughs> and I realize I am doing. You guess you get splattered. So people yeah, people like I got kicked from a squad like on stream a couple weeks ago, and I was like, we don't want your shit thief, and I was like, Aww. what? Why? And I felt like kind of hurt. And someone in chat's like, you don't help people. You don't do anything. You're a selfish class. So I was like, what should I play? And they're like, Scourge, probably explain. So then I understood. But without my stream telling me that I'm a terrible player, I would have known to change. Um, so I think these games, these games can have, let's be honest, sorry, casual players, but they're not the brightest. Um, <laughs> so they kind of have to have their hands held. But once they get their hands held, once they get into it, some casual players turn out to be very hardcore players and very good players. But I think they need to have kind of a jump. And I feel like Guild Wars, you really have to you have to go look for it. You have to go find the YouTube video. You have to go find the guide. You got to go look up builds. There's not really um, an easy way to get good in this game. And I do agree with you. People need to get good. Final yeah. Fantasy XIV had a boss. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV had a boss of raving come out called Get Good. And people <laughs> couldn't beat it. It broke up. Then they finally nerfed it. But it broke up ills. And it was amazing watching all of that. Yeah. Mm. I think when it comes to the um, the content distribution or whatever it was you were saying, 
I think it's very difficult to do that properly in Guild Wars 2 because it's a game that appeals to so many different types of players. Mm. You're never going to please everyone. There's always going to be someone that's unhappy. And I guess, it's for, for me, it seems like ArenaNet spend most of their time doing the story stuff. Right, It's all fully voice acted for multiple different characters. Good cutscenes, new zones, stuff like that. And at the end of it, you end up coming away with, what, like 40, 40 minutes to an hour worth of new content every few months? Yeah. What would, what would yeah. you guys in chat rather have? Would you rather have that? Or would you rather have a new Fractal or a new Raid Wing? That, that's the question. Maybe ArenaNet should be asking their player base those questions. But something that's also frustrating for me, how many weeks ago was it that they said, they put out a post saying that Siege equipment would be nerfed in World vs. World, like half the damage of arrow carts or something. It's been weeks, and you would think that's just a line of code. It's just changing the numbers on... Uh, bloody arrow carts and it's still still not done what mm. why do these things take so long mm. so I, like balancing change it can really make people want to play the game again i think the problem with a lot of that stuff is because the code was written at a point in time where people just kind of like let's let's release guild wars 2 we got to get it out the door and so some of that code like for arrow carts things that probably haven't been touched in a while uh, maybe there aren't that many comments in it, so people looking at the code know what to, I don't know. I think they're probably... Spaghetti it code. sounds like it would... Yeah, it the sounds spaghetti. like it would something that's simple, but believe me, having heard some of the things that I've heard about culling specifically, uh, culling took like three years to fix, which you guys, were you guys around for that? Do you know what I mean when I say culling? No, what do you mean? Sorry. It would, so... If there were a particular amount of character models that were near you, it just didn't draw them on the screen to save CPU resource, basically. So what people figured out how to do in World vs. World, sorry, I've gone back to something else, is just code. But they figured out that they could stand in particular places and corners or on trees. The other Zerg wouldn't be able to see them because they would group up with like 51 people just and then they would just... The only indication you had that anyone was nearby was that their skills just started to lag and then suddenly everyone was dead. And there goes a minute later, you see 300 people running off because they finally got drawn. Because that's World vs. World was... <laughs> I mean, he got used to that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that's the kind of code... It, I mean, it was written by like one guy in a back room two years before launch, and then he left the company or something, and then Wolver's World devs came and thought, okay, we have to redo this whole thing, supposedly. So, there's just... Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's Precursor crafting was another thing. They said, like, back in 2013 that they wanted to add precursor crafting to the game for legendary weapons. That didn't happen until, like, 2000... Late 2016, I think. Uh, I don't, it's just there's there's very very strange things happening mm. at Arena. Yeah, uh, Arena has a slightly poor track record when it comes to uh, balance in well changing hot fixing. I would say, uh, for example, there was a build uh, called Bunker Chrono, Bunker Mesmer. Okay, in the first season of PvP, and um, it got to the point that it was so boring and so horrible that there were actual esports matches where people would leave the game, would, would just quit as soon as one player capped at one point because you wouldn't be able to kill the player at all, right? Yeah, live, yeah, live, so, live esports yeah. events, like on their official yeah, channel. Yeah, live, like, actual podcasts. esports, yeah. People would just people leave. Would just leave. The yeah. Other, the, the, other team would leave a minute less than a minute into the game wow it was that bad. and it, uh, it, it was so bad that uh, well as we understand it uh, people uh, well there were various companies that said well they saw the gameplay and said nope not sponsoring this like this is terrible like no way uh, and that kind of that kind of obliterated the the um the kind of esports pvp is that why scene not like a large esports yeah. scene right now well, there are a lot of reasons. Pro probably, that's, that's probably the big last straw. 
Yeah. And, and the thing is, that existed, right, for right. a long time, right? There's that a, didn't even, get fixed. That was the problem. There are a couple of even better ones than that. Like you said, Firebrand. Have you ever used a mace on Guardian Envy? Yeah, no. well, I use, a mace, I use mace shield and staff. Okay, well, I've so never played Core Guardian there before. The third skill on mace, you know, it makes that little shield block the shield around you. Me, yeah. Yeah, so at launch and for like three years into the game and PvP, you could cast that ability and get the shield and then dodge roll on Guardian, and it would keep the shield and it would never go away until you left the instance or the map. What? You would block everything <sighs> and no one, it was impossible to die unless you got disconnected. Oh like another God. thing that sounds a like, bit uh, a bit broken because that gives you yeah. what uh, protection and aegis and what else or something. No, it just blocked all damage. Like the shield <laughs> stayed up. You couldn't die. I no. mean, there 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 were things like that. Um, and like Revenant Sword Three, the one that like you go on them and spin around in the mists. Mm -hmm. Someone did that to you. You could just back up against the wall. Whenever the castle would finish, they would just fall through the wall underneath the map and stay there. Or, like, there were skills like Scorpion Wire on Thief where you could pull people into corners and terrain and they would get stuck there for the rest of the game and they couldn't get out. <laughs> so that's, that's also, that's also uh, some of the problems with PvP, too. That kind of made so it seems back. that... I mean, I don't know enough of this game. I'm still... I played when it came out, but I played solo and I was playing other most of the time. But now I've come back, so I'm still learning a lot. But it seems that... They are, I guess, are slow to implement things, I assume. Or just, yeah. there'll be a fire and it takes a while to put it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I think, I, well, I mean, how, how do you feel about a, uh, do you like, do you like Connie Mirage Envy? No, honestly, I think uh, ranked <laughs> SVP is, my personal opinion, I think ranked SVP is a joke at the moment. I've played a lot of PvP games, I've played them most for years. Condi Thief. I had a Condi Thief <laughs> put a Condi on me. Sit. He sat. It put his weapon up and watched me die. And I, I couldn't do anything. And I was like, this guy just did one button and killed me. I was like, I, I don't like one button cheats. I don't like the one shot out of stealth from Deadeye. I don't like the staff five spam. I don't like one button cheese to where a crayon eating Lindo Wicker, window Wicker kid can come in and one press a button and kill me to where I'm playing a much more complex spec. I want somebody to try a little bit. If you try a little bit, in PvP and you kill me, I feel good. If you're pressing one button and I'm dying because I have 27 stacks of vulnerability and condition damage on me, I just don't feel like, I feel like it's being handed to them. When I played back in the day, Condi was there, but you almost had to be more skillful to play Condi yeah. than power because you had to evade, apply the Condi, keep outmaneuvering your opponent. Now it's like you just apply Condi and just roll your face yeah. on the keyboard. <laughs> you, 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 you missed turret engineer, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't play that. I didn't see so, that. turret engineer, you have like a rifle turret and a net turret and a thumper turret. And whenever people get close, they start doing things. Thumper turret starts to knock them around and knock them over. Rocket turret just does a lot of damage and it's scaled like flat with power. And net turret immobilizes people. And you've also got mm -hmm. rifle and you can knock people back off the point. And so people figured out that you could play like a soldier's amulet or like an amulet mm -hmm. with only power and defensive stats. And literally mm -hmm. I had games where I would go into PvP. There were also other things where you could jump off of terrain and place the turrets in the air so people couldn't what? actually hit them. So you I would go into a game. It? Yeah, you couldn't like you 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 couldn't hit them. It was impossible. Oh, so I'd yeah. go into a game jump off of trees or rocks, put turrets in the air, sit on the point, tab out of the game, and just AFK. And just <laughs> let my turrets kill people, and they couldn't do anything about it. I literally would not even be in the game. Yeah, yeah. nice. There's think... always been an answer in Duel Wars 2 PvP. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, tr the trouble is, is that, yeah, for, for whatever reason, like, you know, I, I, I'm not really one to kind of, like, bash the devs unnecessarily i'm sure there's a i'm sure there's a reason for it right i'm sure there's something that's going wrong that's that's why this is taking so long right? i don't know that they don't like the color of the balance change so they got to repaint it a few times or something i don't know right like there's there's something going on there but that i i, I don't know in my in my opinion i think it's a really it is a bit of a problem and it it does drive people away from pvp i mean even people like um 
uh, like Syndrome, like the, the rank 55, right? Like the, 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 the team that wins all the tournaments. Uh, they don't play that much. Like Frostball, uh, Frosty, uh, he, he basically just plays PvE you now. Like Misha plays a lot of PvE these days, right? Like, and then they don't play the game that much because it, it probably feels stale and not that competitive for them. Um, which is, I don't know, it's... I, th I think the balance does kind of drive people away, like the speed of the game, like how punishing it is. Like, if you're a new player coming into the game and you play against something like a Condi Mirage or a Condi Thief, like he just jumps on you, right? Yeah. And just like gives you like 15 confusions, like, well, I guess I'm dead. It's just, well, well, well like you can <laughs> cleanse it. Like I play SD, so I can cleanse it with my sword too. I cleanse it with my Sigma. Cleanse it with Shadow Step and it's reapplied again and again and again and again. Yeah. And I just, I just stand there like, what's well, I feel like the current meta is too punishing and not rewarding enough. There's too many sticks and not enough carrots. So you don't come out, even when you win, you don't come out happy. You come out like, oh, I'm so glad it's over. Oh, dude. I can't believe I'm done with that match. Like, yeah. you don't really have fun. It's more like you just, you struggle to sustain to get the W instead of like striving for a victory. And I, I don't know. I, I'm new. So this is, a, this is a noob's point of view. I'm not that good. I'm gold three. Um, I can't get past black because I'm P thieves. Um, but yeah, that's my point of view. But I'm I'm probably a greater majority than a lot of these guys that are out there. Who I mean, I didn't know what Aegis was two weeks ago. I didn't know. So I'm I'm probably what these new players are coming in and feeling like. And I, I don't know. It just feels very um, harsh to play and not um, you know rewarding. To when I land, you know, a cloak and dagger and a steel, but then I'm fighting a mirage. Then I have to put my weapon away because I have tons of confusion. On. Yeah. Yeah, and that's so. Uh, yeah. Balance is important, guys. But but that sort of thing, like just to extend the balance, right? The um, the kind of development cycle seems to take some time in in dealing with these issues with with game modes. Um, I don't know. Uh, for, for example, like, so, so suppose there was um, okay, answer me this. Okay, answer me this, BDO friends. So suppose there was like a game breaking issue, okay, that okay. prevented some content from being playable. Like how long do you think it would take to get fixed? In like, yeah, yeah, go, go, ahead. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they would attempt to do it within a week or two. They, uh, they, they, wouldn't, they probably wouldn't fix it because the devs are idiots in uh, that game. <laughs> but that they would attempt the fix because <laughs> they like patch it every week. Okay. So, so they, they... BDO is BDO's developed by Pearl Abyss. In North America and Europe, it is ran by Cacao. The Kakao team are actually really nice people. Like, I like them. But they don't have a say. They basically are handed a client and are like, yep, here it is. The patch notes are Google translated from Korean. I have a lot of friends speak Korean that go over stuff. And there'll be stuff in the patch notes that aren't even in the game. There's bugs in <laughs> classes that have come out since beta. I played Alpha. I played in Europe. Mm -hmm. I played Russia. I played in Korea. There are so many bugs that have never been fixed. And you, you ask them about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, look for it in an upcoming patch. You said that in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we're about to be in 2019. And it's just, that's the nature of the game. And that game, it's cool, it's fun, it's a beautiful MMO, but it's not, it, you really can't be competitive. Um, there's people out there who have such high gear score, just gonna one-shot you. And it's not that kind of game. It's an infinite progression MMO. And if you like that, you'll have fun. If you like PvP and other types of content, it's not for you. I mean. Pion and I could probably both tell you stories to where we stayed up way too late trying to go for one more attempt on a piece of that. It's just, it's not fun. And <clears throat> the game doesn't patch things for the game's sake. It, it's all about making it. I mean, they just released a scroll that's $50 to change your weapon. Imagine you're a thief with like a, a legendary incinerator, but you want Bolt. You could pay 50 bucks and have it swapped. In. Did mm. BDO would be an incredible game if it was designed from the bottom up to not be a free-to-play, pay-to-win game. It would be the best MMO. It really would. Hmm. So on a fundamental level, though, that those are the things that hold it back. Because if it wasn't free to play, pay to win, it wouldn't have infinite progression. They could allow players to catch up. They could. There'd be more people participating in PvP, so the scene wouldn't be dead. It would be pretty good. Hmm. BDO is free to play, though. You can literally get it free. Yeah. Someone, it's designed from the bottom up to be you, free to play. You go pay to the to forums win. and you say, hey, I'm level 30. Someone buys you the game because they get a pay-to-win item. And people say it's not pay-to-win. I spent 10 grand on it in two and a half years. So it's definitely pay-to-win. Yeah. 
I had quite the advantage over people because of my gear, because of the money I spent. I have friends that have spent, you know, 25 grand, 50 grand, 60 grand. Uh, there's people that have spent more than that. There's a guy in Taiwan, 250,000, 250,000 US dollars on a game just to have gear so he can one shot someone with one button. Two hundred fifty grand. We with that much money, we can have another raid. <laughs> can just buy the raid. Yeah, that's um. Wow, wow. See, right, guys. So what have we learned? Okay, right, All right. Listen up, chat. We haven't got it that bad, huh? Could be worse. We could play BDO. Apparently, you know, could be a lot worse. Um, and the reason I brought that up is because there, there's been a, a raid boss that has been. Well, it, this was quite funny. Like, it, it broke with the latest patch. They, they broke it with oh. the latest living story. Then they said they fixed it, but they actually didn't, and now it's just gone. They, they, just, they just removed the, the boss temporarily. The you fly platform to platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zero. Yeah, I watched you do this one. It's actually yeah. really cool looking. Yeah, it's very cool, but I unfortunately, she's uh, she's broken right now. Uh, this is so, my favorite boss. Yeah. Why, why is that, Brazil? Is it any particular reason? Uh, a phantasmal appendage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, that's, that's good to know, honestly. That that just is, I suppose that's fairly similar. I mean, I, I guess like, Guild Wars 2 has it better off in that case. I mean, there's some, there are some bugs that have kind of been around forever, but... Uh, you have it great. Yeah. We, see, look, I'm there you sure. go. You have it great. There you go. Like, check this out. You're playing, you, you love, say you love Mesmer. Mesmer is your baby. And you've okay. played it for years. All of a sudden, the devs are like, hey, we're going to balance the game and make it better. They take away Phantasms. They take away clones. Mesmer is now just a great sword that shoots a little laser at you. <laughs> you want to play the class anymore? No. Like it, but like you've put all this time and effort into that class. And then imagine it costs you $250 and a month worth of grinding to swap to a different class. Like that's what I've been dealing with. So coming to Guild Wars 2, it's a breath of fresh air. And I turn my computer off at night. I don't have to leave it on all night. And like I can hop on and have fun. Let's do SPP. Let's go do fractals. I have teapot jump on my discord like bro let's go do this raid and you and your buddies told us raids like can't do that stuff so i think if if i can give any to guild wars 2 community like you've got a great game you got an awesome community um and it's fun like i enjoyed it. i'm gonna stay around so i think uh you may think you have it bad but trust me it's it's worse out there <laughs> yeah that's like agreed i think one of the biggest issues that guild wars 2 has when it comes to like the game itself currently and getting new people into the game is the new player experience. I think it's uh, pretty terrible. I tried to get my girlfriend into Guild Wars 2 recently. I'm surprised she played for as long as she has, to be honest. She, um, she just finished the last quest of the personal story today. Man, she was so disappointed. Where you fight, where you kill the first dragon. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't talk about that. You can click on a cannon and, and it's dead. What? <laughs> Yeah, she was she she was so annoyed because I ke I kept telling her, "Oh, dude, the story's so good in Path of Fire," and she was like, "I don't want to just skip to Path of Fire though. I, w I won't know any of the characters. I want to play it from the start and play it in chronological order." And I was like, "Okay, fair enough." And uh, yeah, she hasn't had too much fun with it yet. Hmm. Mm. Well, okay, uh, yeah, I, yeah. The Zaitan fight is a bit, yeah, that's, that's a bit awkward. Uh, that was probably one of the biggest fails ever, and, and yeah, there, there are definitely some problems with the systems in like, the base game, right? Like, well, it, it, it's, it's all, it can only go upwards from there, right? Well, uh, the, the whole problem with the Zaitan fight is that it literally was never finished, and it's obvious that it wasn't because there are places in the dungeon that you can like see on the map. There's like a POI called Zaitan's Rest or something that I don't know that you can get to. And if you go far, farther enough, far enough in, there's a like platform area that's like, hey, it looks like we're supposed to fight a dragon here. And like interesting things that aren't used and that you kind of have to wonder. And especially considering that the last fight is just that you push a button on a cannon. It's like they weren't getting you ready to play Dead Eye back in 2012. It's just kind of like what, it, what happened. It felt like there was supposed to be a second phase to that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Shoot it down. And then I, I was telling her, because she was said, Is that it? Is it over? And I was like, No, it's not over. He's going to come back. I was like, I was, I was calling it. Mm. It just seemed like there was about to be a phase two. And then, and then we went to the celebration area. All the NPCs <laughs> are cheering. And I'm going to say, Yeah, he's, he's going to come out soon. 
I don't know why they're taking so long, and <laughs> it just didn't happen. <laughs> so that was strange. I think another thing with the new player experience as well is, I think maybe there should be more questing, like from one to level ten, mm. because all you've got is you do your first initial quest, yeah, which oh, takes sorry, yeah. five minutes, and then it's like, okay, go do map completion, mm. then you get your quest at level ten, and it doesn't really last uh, too long. What's the go, thing? Go do more map completion. Melon. You go fight the golem like you're the centaurs or something. I, yeah. I don't even know. I just skipped it every time. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. If there's a couple more of those just to get you level ten, because I have people come by the stream and they're like, "Hey, I just downloaded the game. I came from BDO. I was watching your stream. Uh, how do I level? I actually don't even know how to level because when I leveled back in the day, it was Edge of the Mist. You walked around, got a couple just, levels, yep. and the you hero point or you hero trained the commander. Um, so I don't have a proper way to answer that. Is if there's a way to ha- hold someone's hand at 10, or at least get them enough to whether they're figuring out this is what a heart does, this is how, you know, you do this, this is how you interact with them, this is how, you know, a Vista can get you stuff. I don't know, just get, get them just a little bit, then they can probably figure out how to get all the way through. I just recommend people to buy Path of Fire and just start there. Mm. Yeah, that, now that, that, that's going to be a really interesting idea. So, you, so, so perhaps something like uh, have it a bit more structured have the leveling experience a bit more structured the new player experience structured say to level 10 20 or even 30 or something like that and then have it open out again because the 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 trouble with the new player experience is that the game is very much designed around the fact that you it's a very it's like it's your adventure right you you go out into the world you can do whatever you want you can go to this map you can go to that map you can pretty much start and go in every, in any direction what the only kind of vague guideline is that every 10 levels you'll have that block of story content like when you when you when you level up you give 10 20 etc etc et right so uh, if, if it was perhaps more structured do you think that would help people kind of understand and if they introduced um the the new player to okay this is um this is a an event this is an event this is a heart this is a, you know uh you know a skill point or a hero point rather like in the game like that if 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 players were directed towards that stuff so perhaps if perhaps if say like the first two maps were more guided and more structured more like almost like story maps right and then you adventure out into a more open world would that be a, the thing that's kind of the best way to a better way to go about get, uh, introducing players to the mechanics stuff like that just, yeah, and do that and do it as an option. And if you do the option and you go through it, because not everybody wants to do that stuff. Some people like to just explore, like you said. And I think that a lore that Guild Wars 2 has it draws people and they want to do it that way. But again, people who don't know what they're doing, if they have like a, a tutorial, they go through, but if they actually complete the tutorial, they get, you know, a skin or a weapon or some materials, you know, then it'll walk them through it. I think that'd be huge. I hmm. think the leveling in this game is the most irrelevant I've ever seen in any MMO. So much so that I'd say the fact that you have to level to eighty is more of a barrier for people to get into the game than uh, something that is a selling point of the game. Hmm. Yeah. Now that is a very it's very it's very interesting that you say that because. Uh, if you asked ArenaNet, I imagine they would consider it a... They would consider it a selling point, I would say, actually. Yes, it's definitely not. I'd say that th- there's a difference between doing map completion for leveling yeah. than it is when you do it for max level. For max level, you you know that you're going to get some rewards for it. You get a certain sense of OCD. Mm. Most of the time, you do a map completion whilst you're waiting in queue, so you don't even mind. You're just running around, and you're not really doing it to level, so it's fine. Whereas if you're doing it to level up, it's it's a different mindset that you have. And it's because you're trying to get to the next thing and you have to go through a bunch of boring things to get to that next thing. Is there a dungeon queue in this game? Like, not the fractals, the other dungeons? <laughs> there aren't any what? dungeons in this game anymore. I swear, I, did, I swear, like, in 2000, when this game came out, I did a dungeon. Yeah. And it was, like, underground with, like, some sand in it and, like... I remember doing yeah. a dungeon, but like I, I have, I've been back and I haven't seen one since. I don't, really, I don't even know where they are. Do them dungeons have been swept under the carpet, and Arena likes to pretend they don't exist. Um, yeah. Yeah. I can go in depth on that if you want. Like the only reason I did dungeons, I made Madri the other day, and I had to go into dungeons and get like special items, but I didn't actually do the dungeon itself. I yeah, we need like a reward revamp. Mm. I can go down the dungeon rabbit hole if you want, but I mean... Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I mean if, if you told me you were going to give me $100, 
If I could go to a dungeon, I wouldn't know how to get to. Yeah, like, that's, that's fair. how I. Do, they're not. I don't know. I don't know where they are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, to kind of steer it back, then does there need to be a more traditional? Like, is, is the leveling experience just a little bit too a little bit too open ended? Does it need to be brought back a little bit? Um, stuff like more traditional rewards. The thing is, though, as as Peon said, right, like everything before eighty is totally meaningless, right? It's not mm -hmm. like um, you, you know you got it. You want to do this dungeon, like because if you do a dungeon at level thirty five or whatever, like you, you just jump into Ascalon and kind of comes like, out of the group. You, you, yeah, like no one, no one does dungeons at level thirty five. You do dungeons when you get to like level eighty, right? That's that's the problem. Like, why? Uh, well, bec uh, because actually, good money to do. They're good. They're good money to do dungeons. Actually, as it turns out, like the uh -huh. the, the the game kind of doesn't get played as it's as it was supposed to. Like obviously, you know, I, I imagine Arena intended you to say like ah. I'm level 20, I can go do this dungeon. But the thing is, like, you, no one does that. I, I mean, you, you just, even though they do give a lot of experience, um, uh, so they, I imagine they are probably pretty good for leveling, actually, uh, you end up basically starting the game at 80, completely, right? Like, world versus world before 80, like, uh-uh. Like, no, let's, let's not even... Awesome. Well, well, <laughs> well, you can't do it. I tried it, you can't do it. You, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to struggle. You're going to have a very bad time. Um... So the, yeah, huh? That's uh, here's what we, here's what we do, dude. Okay. We um, next expansion. Okay. Everyone makes a new character. You start off at level eight, so your levels are irrelevant, and you just set the story a few years in the future. Let's go. Yeah. And people then in, make a completely new new player split ex experience, in which teaches them their class. Mm. Um, maybe it's it's got a more user friendly thing when it comes to showing your builds and stuff hmm. different gear like a proper explanation or something you just start a level 80 a and you just get a proper tutorial or something i don't know yeah no, that's good that, that's a really fresh perspective on why i imagine arena net kind of added the level 80 boost um because like the the level eighty boost just it allows you to basically skip all the fluff right and get into the actual game like straight away like straight into Path of Fire straight into Heart of Thorns wherever you choose to go right, um, so that's that is something I haven't really ever thought about actually because it's been such a long time since I've even gone through that experience for the first time right, uh, I mean I I didn't mind the leveling experience so much but. Um, I didn't really know what the game was about at the time, right? So I was like, okay, right, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do, we'll do the level. Let's see what happens. Like, what's going on here? What's going on? Like, you know, but then again, the story was very different like, before, before the new, the the rework. Okay, I, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see if you guys think this was better. Um, so now each the story is d is divided into episodes, right? Like every ten levels. Before, um. It would be like a constant quest, like a main story quest, but it, like, you, you would get it instantly after finishing the last one. Even if you were way low, too low level, yeah. you'd still get the next step, right? So you know how you have to wait to level 20 to get the next one, right? Like even if you were too low, it would still allow you to have a go, basically. So in other words, you could, you could go into an instance way too high for you, high, high level for you, even if you were a really low level. So in other words, there was always that next story. So this is, aha, okay, right. To progress your story, you need to go here. You need to go here to, to go the story. It moved you through the maps, like eventually to Zaitan, right? But now that isn't real, well, that isn't the case, right? Like uh, you have to wait a 10 level block between, you, between your next piece of story content. Whereas previously it would be like, okay, there's one at level 10, there's one at level 11, one at level 13, 15, 17, et cetera, like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so like, is that a, is the, the current approach worse than that? Would you say like having that, so having basically a more disjointed story, like a more episodic story, if you will? Do you think that it's kind of hampering the new player experience? Like, so does that contribute to having people not really know what the hell to do in in the game or what they're what they're aiming for in leveling up? I suppose. I think so. I think it'd be better to just say recommended level, but still mm. let you try it. That's yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. what. It Say it yeah. literally said like recommended level, but then people died to the hammer boss too much, and mm. it's an old meme. Yeah, the the revamp new player experience wasn't. I mean, I think it was considered it was, a bit of a bit of a bad. bit of a failure. It, well, I mean, it, it, it didn't work out quite as as Arena intended. It, uh, I don't it think was, it was horrible. Mm. I think one of the reasons I managed to get into Guild Wars 2 with Path of Fire is partly to do with the story, right? If you, if you were to just level from 1 to 80, the story isn't going to be the thing that really gets you into the game because you're going to have to 
do a lot more map completion and stuff than anything. With Path of mm. Fire, I was able to just fire through the story, and that got me into it. That kept me playing. You need to think, what's the fun part of the leveling process? And in Path of Fire, it was just the story, seeing what was happening next, unlocking the mounts, seeing what the next zone was like, and just going through all of these secret areas. But in the vanilla leveling experience, it's not really, it's not really like that, because the story is somewhat forgettable, because it's been done quite a long time ago. And it's ten levels apart. So yeah. you kind of forget it and lose a bit of interest. Yeah. Uh, you lose the you lose like you lose the flow, like you got no like no tempo to it. So you the the play the player is kinda of left kind of waving their hands around for a bit and they say, Well, I guess I go do a map now, right? And the, and, and 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 map completion, I mean I I don't mind map completion. I think it's I think I, I think it's kind of okay. I've had some fun with map completion. I you know, I have done it like five times or something to make legendary weapons, right? But um uh, I can certainly see how a new player, especially coming, like th this is what the show's all about, right? Like, especially coming from, from a, a, another MMO, which might have more structure to it, right? Would um, not find that particularly engaging, right? Because there's no, th there's no, like, there's no shove, right? There's no, like, well, well what, there's no, the game doesn't really tell you what to do uh, as such and or in any way, right? Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a little bit too much hands-off, right? Like, I, th I think I do like... The, the fact that the game is, is a little hands-off, it doesn't exactly like force you to go anywhere, right? It doesn't push you to go anywhere. But then again, you could you could actually say the same thing of um, a more traditional MMO like World of Warcraft, right? Like, in theory, you can level in like a whole bunch of different paths, right? It's basically mm -hmm. the same in Guild Wars 2 in that respect, right? You, you could go to various different maps and just follow the quest lines there. You don't have to go to this map or that map, uh, I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, can certainly, I can certainly see that perspective. That perspective makes... A good chunk of uh, a good chunk of sense. I, I would have I to say. Have to say map completion feels like the kind of thing that you would do optionally mm. in this game because it's not overly fun or engaging. Yeah. In comparison to like other MMOs where you, you would just do questing, like in WoW, for example, you you would quest and then you would each zone has its own story, for example. Yeah. And most zones have their own dungeon, which would be the the kind of climax of the zone and that kind of the dungeon at the end of the zones, the carrot at the end of the stick, essentially. Yeah. And the story keeps you playing. Well, yeah, I, I, I well, within Guild Wars 2, you do have the world bosses. A lot of zones will have the world, like the, the culmination of the, um, meta event, right? Like you, you end up, like, so you fight the shadow behemoth or you fight the claw of jaw mag. There, there is a certain story to each zone in that respect. And I think, it, I think that, that sort of repeatable meta event is really cool. I think mean, that is actually yeah, pretty Yeah, those awesome. things are really fun, oh, but God. for a new player, that's not really apparent. You, you have no idea what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you don't know that's going to happen, right? I, I, you, you kind of have to... You kind of have to come across it, I suppose, right? Like, yeah, I, you have to get lucky to see it, because they're like only every few hours. Mm. Yeah, without the knowledge that it's going to happen, you might not... It might not happen, I suppose, but um, I, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of a tricky one, actually. If you're in, um, speaking of Dormag, if I'm in that area and I'm not looking at the map, is there any other notification that the boss has spawned? Like, do I hear anything? Is there a roar? Is there, like, yes. like for example, I don't know, because in BDO, like, say you're just doing something and uh, Karan just spawns. It's a giant Harvey boss. You hear that, and you, I'll have a wireless headset. I'll be in the kitchen making stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll start running up the steps, and I'm going, you know, to get to the computer. But like, you hear that anywhere? Is there something in this game that has an effect with that, either on the map or in the area, or is it just the orange circle that you the meta event started? You you have to be in the area. Mm. I think there are some like where the little little text up in the top right corner that people okay. really don't even pay attention to most of the time. Right. If you're in a particular area where the meta event is, it'll show the progress and say what's happening. Problem Got with it. that is, like, Shadow Behemoth, a lot of the time, like, it just says the swamp lies dormant. I didn't know Shadow Behemoth was a boss until a year and a half into the game. I, I had never seen it. I had oh. no idea what it was. And I just saw the swamp lies dormant. I thought, okay, great. Cool. And then at one point I was running through and it said portals to the underworld and I thought what the hell is this and then you kill portals and this giant demon comes out of the ground and mm. you kill it but like Jormag there's a roar to it um, I think you could probably only hear it within a certain proximity and I don't think that the event the event probably doesn't show unless you're in that like segment of the zone 
but I could be wrong about that. Mm. Shadow Behemoth is like that. If you're not in the in or around the swamp, it doesn't say anything. You have no idea. Yeah, so chat's saying to me that it's basically the instance map you're on, there's an event, it'll tell you up in the top right. You have to read it. I mean, as a new player walking, I, I don't I don't yeah. look at stuff. Like I'm Exactly. MMOs overload you with stuff. The easiest way to do it is to be like, hey idiot, there's a giant dragon screeching, go get it. You know? And that's that works. I mean, you hear a loud roar, you're like, what was that? And you look at your map, you see something on your map, like, I'm going up there, let's see what's going on. You get up there, you see all these people in a commander tag, you join in, that's your first world boss experience, and it blows your mind. Yeah. I remember the first time I did Quaddle and Joy Mac, I was like, this is, I mean, even coming back to the game, I got friends that come from BDO. I'm like, hey, you should go do the Shatter. They're like, what's that? And I get them to go up there, and they're like, you know what? That was actually really damn cool. And I think Guild Wars 2 has nailed the Guild, or nailed the um, world boss experience at home. Hmm. Maybe yeah. what the game needs more of is like world boss timers or a map meta tracker part of the user interface. That would be one yeah. way of like recycling the content. All you need is to design a UI element essentially. Because even after I've been playing it, I still don't fully get the way, like, what are the rewards for these map metas? Uh, how do I check the progress of the overall meta? I, I don't know. This information is really poorly hidden. Mm. And you only really learn about it from other players. The game doesn't teach you about the meta events very well at all. Yeah. Will we roll, ball, roll bosses and World of World that can take keeps? <laughs> so it's yeah. gonna get... There are bosses in World versus World. Well, they kind they kind of they cut rid of them. They're, uh, they're not. There was. There, is the giant grub still there? The giant. Yeah. Slug? The the, over, the overgrown grub is still there. Yeah. 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 The grub is still there. He's very fearsome. Well. I suppose that they could integrate the world boss stuff into the world as well. There could be NPCs that tell you about this sort of thing, right? Like there could sure. be there could be uh, you know a character who runs up to you and says like you know with the shadow behemoth like you know we need your help to defeat the shadow behemoth right? The, there's something in the swamp that sort of thing. And, and, and honestly, there probably is something like that somewhere. To be fair, right? Okay, but it, it's probably fairly obscure. Uh, yeah, I, I think the I think. Players do tend to catch on to that sort of thing, though. But I can certainly, I can certainly see um, missing it. I, I can definitely see that happening. It probably isn't that difficult to do it, right? Uh, but uh, it, it does seem that uh, it, new players do tend to kind of uh, get in the know eventually. But then maybe people, um, may, maybe like a few people th uh, slip through the net, though. I suppose I, I can definitely imagine that's certainly the case, right? Um, but I don't know. Uh, there's it's 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 a bit tricky actually. It's a really bit tricky. And when it when it comes to like the new player experience with regards to the tutorial, um, mm -hmm. I was think I was thinking about this over like the last few minutes. I was thinking like, well, you know, do you want people at level eighty immediately? Like, can they can they learn it? But to be honest, like the open world content is pretty easy. Like you you kill stuff pretty quickly. So like, honestly, like learning the game at level one and learning the game at level 80 is probably not that different in an open world context i would say like in heart of thorns maybe because the heart some of the heart of thorns npcs like massive assholes i don't know if you guys have been on um, the heart of thorns maps uh, pocket yeah. raptors yeah i hate them <laughs> Oh my god, I did that on stream, I recall, I thought I was bad at the game, I didn't realize they were that vicious. <laughs> I don't like the shadow ones that do shadow strike or something. Ah, the smoke scales, right? The, smoke yeah. scales. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so, Walking down the hill to get my glider and I get destroyed like nine times, these little tiny raptors yeah. are horrible old creatures. <laughs> yeah, they, they are... They, some of the Heart of Thorns was a pretty dangerous, actually. Um, it was kind of um, one of the shocking things. Um, uh, open world in Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2 was always pretty easy, right? You could kind of roll everything. But when they added Heart of Thorns, suddenly there were these, like, horrifying, like, terrifying monsters, right? <laughs> the, there was, like, the smoke scales and the itzel and the mushrooms. They were, whoa! They, they were just, de yeah, yeah, they would just destroy you, right? Like, so, and, um... <laughs> Uh, it used to be harder, actually. Like so a lot of the stuff, some of these monsters actually got nerfed. Uh, for example, like the hero points. Like, a lot of the hero points that um, were it, are in the Heart Thorns. They they used to be harder, right? And they used to be all be champions. Some of them are veterans, and they made some of them easier. But they used to be all harder, and, and it was it was kind of it was it was a bit of a shock, right? It was it was a bit of a shocker uh, breaking into this this open world and getting absolutely demolished, right? By uh, so are these creatures, right? And that again, here here's the unusual thing, right? Like it's difficult to critique Arena on this because that's they intended it to be that way, 
right? That was intentional. They 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 didn't. Um, the difficulty wasn't mistuned as such. They wanted it to be like that to be more punishing and a bit scary. People wanted it to be too. Yeah, Every, yeah. Everyone wanted harder stuff. Yeah. But it, it turned out it was kind of a, uh, well, you know, like in, in the timeless words of, of the war, you know, uh, <laughs> you think you do, but you don't, right? Uh, like, uh, it, it was, it got a lot of backlash for it, and then they nerfed, they nerfed stuff, right? Basically, is how it goes. Like, they added this amazing event. Like, have you guys done um, the, the chat Garant in Tangled Depths? I haven't done a minute of events as I've been Ah, uh, yeah, so there's, there's an event in, in one of the Heart of Thorns maps, which is probably considered to be the hardest boss. Oh, oh and Dragonstone as well. Let's talk about Dragonstone, damn, dude. So... There's a map where you, there's like a map wide event. It takes it takes a while to set up. You have to um, you have to do, do all these events around the map to prepare these to, to prepare these cannons to blast into the um, the next map, the final map to take down Mordremoth, Right, and the, the maps are very intricate into the story in in Heart of Thorns. Right, you, you do progress through them. That event kind of progresses through them. So you do all these events, right, and then you have to defend these four cannons. So you have to split into four squads, right, and defeat these four giant insects, basically. And th this was um really hard on launch right um uh, and you would fail you would fail a lot and there was stuff like you know uh, even brazil brazil did it with his gun it was like whoa you guys did you know, this guild did chat garrett right it was it was kind it really of a thing figured out how to exploit it. yeah it, it was funny it was you know like, it was an achievement to beat this boss yeah, uh, it but, was. People but, but were then, fighting for World Force for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, it, yeah, then, then, then it was like, oh, it's too hard. But they nerfed it into Oblivion, basically, and now it's really easy. Um, yeah, feels bad, man. Uh, so like, it's I, kinda, do, I yeah. do like it when MMOs make things that you, know, you don't want a game to be a pushover. I mean, I know Peon could probably Peon's probably played ten times as many more games I have. But when you go into a game that you know all the content is kind of snooze fast, you know, you don't really have an interest to go in there but it's funny when you know all my buddies were coming over from bdo and they would all go get their glider and you would just hear someone just flip out in discord because they got to the pocket grab. so those little novelty things are uh, i think they're exciting to give the game character i mm. think they're memorable as well do you remember killing easy bosses not really mm, no. you remember getting your ass kicked by a boss yes yeah <laughs> remember, remember when karana went up in the air the first time we all died to feathers yep. yeah and i lost crystals worth I lost nine crystals those negative karma <laughs> But a month ago, I hurt my feeling. Yeah, nice. Yeah, experiences like that I think are mm. are good. And I see Ben in chat saying that they were getting asked to make it harder, and you know that's cool. Um, you know, mm. I enjoy you know having experiences like that. Like you know, you do your first aquaddle, and you hear you know the the roar of it coming up from the water. That's that's awesome. And, I, and I've had friends come to the game. They did it with me just a couple weeks ago, and they're like, "Yo, this is actually really cool." Because we've we've played BDO. There's tons of bosses in mm. BDO, but it's just. A guy swinging around with a stick and you just gotta avoid the red circles it's not mechanics but this game actually has some pretty cool mechanics and when you took me raiding this game has legit mechanics like i, I didn't think guild wars 2 raids were gonna i mean i've done mythic level raiding i've been a you know top world 10 warlock and wow i've done cool stuff but i didn't think guild wars 2 was gonna have actual raids and it does like mm. I mean, there, there's true mechanics and i was like, yeah and i want to do more raiding and like I never, when someone told me, yeah, Guild Wars 2 has raids, I was like, lol, that's going to go well. <laughs> and then I'm done, I'm like, they're actually kind of fun, I want to do that again. And so yeah, yeah. I want to find a good class that I can take in raids. Um, so yeah, I, I think this game's definitely got some grand slams. And mm. I know we kind of pick on it because it's something we enjoy. But as playing, you know, coming from a lot of the modes, I've done Final Fantasy XIV, Star Wars Old Republic, BDO, wow, I think uh, Guild Wars 2 is a, a shit stuff to offer it's all on the table that's um you know fractals are fun ratings fun uh spp is fun ranked is terrible uh world v world is great um i'm enjoying it hmm yeah i want i want to uh yeah, come back to the, kind of that aspect of like the, the the almost like the marketing of the game a little bit but i'd like to um i'd like to ask uh peon what do you think that the game um fails to teach you like what what uh, for, for example, like in your in your your girlfriend's place of the game, like what is it that you think it was not correctly explaining? Like what was it missing? And what was it? Was it just the guidance, or was it uh, stuff about the mechanics that are missing? Like stuff like uh, boons, conditions, that sort of thing. Uh, what what's missing in that new player experience in terms of explaining to the player what's going on right with uh, with the game? Um, from the, for, from the point of view of a new player, things like um, like the stats, mm. what, what what each of the stats do. What stats does my class do, do my class need? I basically had to set her up in some kind of way with that. Um, 
the buffs, b- b- boons, and that kind of thing. Um, and initially, like most most new players, like they do the first quest, and then they're like, "Okay, now what?" And when mm. you explain to them, just do map completion. They're like, R- "Really? Is that it?" And then then they get to level ten. So so that I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point because I was. I mean, I got the gold three in PvP before I realized that Aegis blocks my attack. I didn't even know what Aegis was. Like, I didn't know how. How do I figure that out? I mean, I know that makes me look, you know, stupid, but the game doesn't tell me. And if I can't find, you know, a way for a game to, you know, articulate, this is how the stat works. This is what you want. Um, you know, when I was playing Firebrand, everyone's like, "Yeah, you want concentration. Why would I want concentration? It will increases boon duration. I'm like, what exactly? Is, you know?" And so I'm having to like, this is people explaining it to me. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to find. I don't even know how to find a good source of that for this game unless I just click H. So, you know, something like, something else I think skills. is is the fact that different weapons do different things. I think the game should teach you that way earlier on. Like it should be one of the first thing the games the game teaches you. Mm. Like my skills are dependent on the weapon that I equip because it's not something mm. that other MMOs really have. And it's actually something I don't really like about Guild Wars Two, to be honest. Like you play a certain class and you want to use a certain weapon. And Tough, maybe right? that weapon yeah. isn't viable. Yeah, and it's a it's a common complaint a lot of people seem to have about yeah. it. Yeah, I like Dagger Dagger Thief, but sadly, it's just not really viable. And fortunately, I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I think it's cool looking. I like the skills, um, but unless you play Condi or Power in PVE, it's it's not really too useful overall. I think it's still I think it's barely above average. But with I mean. Pistol, pistol, staff, rifle. There's so many other options that just trump it. And, um, you know, I kind of wish, I, I guess that's the nature of metas, but and how balance works. But I mean, I'm actually just sitting here near a heart in game, and four people have come by and they've all been pistol, pistol thieves. But there's so many in options. PvP? There's PvE. Or, you know, they're, yeah, I don't yeah, know what's going on. They're hunt. killing, they're ki- near a heart near this guy, mm-hmm. and they're killing all these hogs, but they, they've all been pistol, pistol thieves. Just holding their S key and clicking three. Um, you know, I've, there's so many options out there, these classes, why is it? I feel the current meta in a lot of classes, it's so pigeon-toed. It's just so, it's driven to a point to where, like, you can run, I mean, there's so many options, but why is it only that, like, two are good? Yeah, yeah. I, I agreed. Some, something else I don't like about Guild Wars 2 is... The fact that you basically need a different gear set for each type of content that you do. As a new player, that's a real pain in the ass. Like, world versus world, you need certain stats. Open world, you need certain stats. Raids, you need certain stats. Fractals, like, there's a different build for... You kind of need different builds for everything, really. SPVP, different build. It's, um... And the fact that it takes up so much inventory space to keep track of all of those builds... Could we not just unlock a certain piece of gear, say, Berserker's Plate? It's account-bound unlocked exotic Berserker's Plate. I've got the full set. Now I can use that on every character. Just, like, add a wardrobe to it or something. That'd be nice. Well, I mean, if you get Ascended, you you kind of do have that, because you can just transfer it around your characters. Yeah, but say you have a bit of Ascended for, like, five different classes for then four different types of content. That's a lot of space. Well, yeah, that that, that, that is that, that is true to a certain extent. I mean, things do cross over. For example, you can play you can play a power warrior like power damage. You can play that in you can play that in open world uh, raids, fractals, um, and world versus one. You'll do okay. Like maybe suppose you played world versus one. And you got some marauder gear on your warrior. Like yeah, that's not optimal for um uh, for raids, but you could still play it, right? You'd still do fine if you played on your Marauder Warrior in in, uh, in raids. You'd be okay with that. Uh, and in in open world, in open world, um, you 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 can play whatever you want, right? You, you it it really doesn't matter. Uh, open open world is the place where you can play that that like where you can indulge yourself in the class fantasy to a certain extent. Like if if you want to play, uh, let me think, like Rifle Warrior or. I don't know, like axe, like I don't know, like axe mace warrior, or like, I don't know. What about ranger? Like I don't know, like great sword ranger, or I don't short know, like bow short power. bow, short bow power ranger, or or whatever, right? Like you want to play scepter on your Ellie, you want to play. 
axe on Necro, but then again, axe is actually kind of good, right? But mo most axe weapons, great on Necro. yeah, mo mo <laughs> most, axe too. yeah, most most weapons do have application at least somewhere. But you but you know what I mean, like uh, give give me some really bad weapons. I don't know, like sword off and on warrior or something. Like warrior is like one that has some like, kind of like crappy weapons. What do you mean sword off and on warrior is bad? It just doesn't do anything. So, yeah, like mace. Yeah, like mace sword revenant. If you want to play like I don't know, like mace sword revenant, like power build. Yeah, sure, you can do that, right? In, in open world, you can play whatever you want. You can play whatever you want. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I can definitely see that it's a little a little frustrating to have to, especially with the inventory, and you have to buy more slots. But then again, you can just kind of grind out gold to get that and get some good bags. Uh, but I, I mean, to, to a certain extent. The game has to inconvenience you, right? I, 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 yeah. I, I mean this. I mean this in the politest way possible, right? But at the end of the day, um, <laughs> Guild Wars Two needs you to buy gems, right? Oh yeah, Scepter on Mesmer or something. You want to buy Scepter Mesmer, then yeah, you can you can play that, right? But, you know, you can play. You know, you have to buy gems, so the game has to kind of troll you a little bit. Otherwise, they won't make any money. Speaking of um, that, have you noticed since uh, Bless since Bless fell, uh, the prices of legendary skyrocket? I mean, I personally have eight now. I've been playing the game for weeks. Uh, <laughs> That's insane, but it's insane. But I'm way. just saying, like you've seen. I think I think it's awesome that a game has like a built-in way to take. It's like, hey, like I can take these gems, I can buy this item, and it gives me a quality of life. Um, and I've noticed that since Blast and other games aren't doing so hot, a lot of people have come to make Guild Wars to their home. I watched a, a legendary that was like two thousand gold go up to almost three thousand gold. So it's it's funny to see that you know, that increase. Yeah, it's it's that it's that yeah it's that catch. There's a big influx of players who are willing to spend money and want to get into the game. They want to find something new. Like everyone was so excited for Bless, and then it turns out it's a massive clown fiesta. I mean, it's just it, <laughs> yeah. it, just a train wreck, just a disaster. Uh, That's and then, why I have my legendaries. I'm yeah. fun to bless. And I, I and people are just I think from the from the BDO crowd when they come to this game, they're kind of wow, it, this game. This game's business model is really fair. This feels good. Oh, absolutely. you know, it's a, yeah. <laughs> it costs so like a BDO. Just so that the chat knows, to be competitive, you need inventory slots. You need weight. You need pets. You need leveled pets. Uh, you need a costume, <clears throat> a gelling, a uh, horse costume. So you're looking at around two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars per character, and then to level it, which takes about two weeks to a month, depending on how much you can play. So when people are like, you know, you, you have a really great over here that how far that money would go. I mean, you buy $10 pets, combine them with $10 pets and hope they go up. And they usually don't. So it's just, it's wild that all that you get so much content for so little. Yeah. Until you play it all for six years and then it feels like there's nothing. Well, uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> one thing I know is, People will come to my stream and I, I get all excited when I get a tome, so I can level another character. Then people send me screenshots of having like 5,000 yeah, tomes yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. Do you think Guild Wars, now that it's getting into its, you know, I think it's still great. I don't think it's aged at all. I think it's dated. I think it's just becoming, it's got character on it now. Do you think they're going to implement more systems to where you can figure out efficient ways to turn some of those items into either gold or into, you know, I mean, some people, a guy who helped me craft on my legendaries, he had like 9,000 spirit shards. Oh, yeah, I've got and something like 13,000 or something like that, yeah. Is, is there a way they can add content, they can take these veterans who just have tons of stuff and give them kind of a new goal or a new... They may be asking too much because, you know, it's... Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say there absolutely is. And they're, they're, to a certain extent, they're... That that exists. You can turn most currencies into gold, kinda maybe, but they end up as mostly gold savers. For example, they're, they're like replacements for gold. But you can you can get ascended armor with PvP tokens, with world versus world tokens, so you don't have to buy the materials and craft the set, right? That sort of thing. You can um, you can always avoid spending gold by using these other currencies, right? Like if you do fractals, you can get random ascended drops, that sort of thing. And it, the problem with the way the game is right now is that you have a lot of veteran players, right? Who have everything and have everything to the point that even when the next expansion comes out, they'll be able to instantly obtain pretty much everything instant, well, immediately. 
uh, yeah. because they have so much gold. They have so many ascended chests. For example, I, I mean, when it when it comes to ascended sets, I, I just like I, I just waste ascended stuff at this point because like, you get so much in this game if you do raids, if you do fractals, if you do um, PvP in World versus World. By the time the next expansion comes out, you'll you'll have so much. Trust me, dude. If you keep playing as much as you are, uh, well, and 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 peon as well, right? Uh, you'll be drowning in this stuff, um, right? If you play the game a lot. It will it will reward you right like the game will reward you for playing it a lot you'll end up very wealthy uh, and uh, you go uh, go with oodles of ascended gear right like if I want to craft an ascended set I don't even have to spend gold really like it, it I, I can just like get it for free pretty much which which is great like I, I, I this is not me flaming the game right this is this is excellent but the, the trouble is, is that the more you get into the game I suppose like the more of a veteran player you become the easier the goals are right? Okay, so what would be a, a difficult task for, for a newer player or a more casual player? Uh, crafting a legendary. Uh, or making an ascended set, gearing this character, etc, etc, etc. It's suddenly trivial, like completely trivial for a more veteran player. So, in a sense, like, you know, that kind of endgame grind, right, of, of, of an MMO, the more you play, the easier it gets, right? I mean, Rizzo, were you going to say something, by the way? I kind of cut well, you off yeah, a little bit. So, I, I have, like, I don't know how many characters I have at this point. I have four thieves, four warriors. Like I have a ton of stuff. They're all geared ready. I could buy a character slot. I could make a new character, have it to level 80, have it completely geared in ascended gear, a meta build, meta weapons, everything done in like less than 15 minutes. And it's just because I've done so much content and I've got so much stuff that it's just take like I have boxes i have entire bank tabs full of ascended gear that i just don't do anything with because i have so much i have ascended armor pieces and weapons and trinkets and it's just useless to me because i don't i don't have anything to put them on so like it's it's just i don't know by the time that like i played the game a lot i have almost thirteen thousand hours into it over six years and there's just you kind of I fortunately like the combat and like a lot of the PvE content and just playing with people that I'm friends with. That's also, I mean, still a big part of it to me. But like, I, I don't ever really have problems running into anything unless it's spending gold. And if that's the case, I never have gold. Mm. But do you wish this game had actual gear progression? No. Oh. Yeah. I would view. I would view what we've been complaining about to be a massive positive of the game one of the things that is amazing about guild wars 2 is that it doesn't screw you right when it comes yeah. to gearing and alts right and basically what what we just described the effect we just described was the game being very fair like arguably over fair to you um if you want to gear something that's great like you you can transfer from another character uh you can level to 80 instantly with tomes as, as you know envy was talking about yeah. right uh you can um use various currencies that you've played in xm if you want to transfer to raids from pvp awesome you can buy your gear in pvp and head straight on over to PvE, right? The game is very fair to you, um, and ver oh. and it, it doesn't try and screw you over when you try and do something in the game, right? Which so, is uh, something I don't understand. You have legendary armor in this game, which I think is a great quality of life, mm. right? Like you grind that legendary armor. Say I have a full set of legendary armor, and what P uh, Pion was saying is it's kind of frustrating swapping stats. So say I'm a mesmer, and for world of world roaming, I do power mirage, but then I want to go into a Condi. Mm. Mesmer spec for PVE. How do you swap the runes? Is there a way that isn't so cumbersome to swap? Like, is there a way that I can have? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I don't even know how to swap the. Rune. Uh, double, just double click destroyed. and put the new rune on, and it just goes on yep. and replaces the other one. There is no armor. Yeah. You can just swap without an issue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Right that's click awesome. it and hit. You right click it and hit change stats, or you double yeah. click it if it's equipped. And if you like, it's just like applying a rune to a new one. You just double click the rune in your inventory and click on the armor and the runes just switch places. But the runes don't get destroyed. Game. No, they don't no. get destroyed. See, we that's the gear progression I like in this game. Horizontal, make make yeah. more of that. Make more I guess it's called quality of life gear grinds. Like you don't have to have it. Mm. The Syndage just is fine, but the legendary you're gonna look pretty fancy with this massive warhorn bigger than a Sura, but also it gives you a quality of life to be able to swap runes, swap stats, and you know, move it around. And I guess I mean 
I know Peon was frustrated with how to move stuff around. I just bought more shared inventory slots, and I just dragged my armor or my stuff up to there and swap character, and there it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, that. That, that that sort of thing is absolutely essential. But again, the, the uh, what, what Peon is, is is frustrated with is something that hasn't been added to the game, which is build templates, right? And yes. well, in truth, I, I, I have you heard of a um? It's it's like a mod, right? It, it's something called Arc DPS. Yes. Yeah, that actually has build template functionality, and that's it, it's officially sanctioned. Like that's allowed. Like Arena is okay with it. Like Chris Cleary um uh, actually works with the guy. He they he runs new features by uh, Chris Cleary. The, the uh, Delta Delta Connected is the name of the guy. So you can have build templates in this game, but it's through an external program. It's just like a like a mod, right? It's it's just a DLL that injects itself into the game. Uh, so that. You can do that, and it works with legendaries as well. So you can actually do legendary stat swapping with it. It's it's not perfect. It's a little it's a little cumbersome. Um, sometimes. Might accidentally delete all your gear. No, it no, it doesn't. It might get a bit confused. <laughs> it might get a bit confused sometimes. But yeah, that it is it is in the game. Like official support is pretty unlikely now that Arc DPS exists. Honestly, like ironically, it's probably not going to happen even more now. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a little annoying. But yeah, absolutely, they are working on this too. Uh, for example, there's a legend legendary trinket you can get where you can uh, swap the stats on that's a oh, legendary on i just yeah. started at aurora mm -hmm. aurora yeah that peon you should quit because it's awful i uh, know everybody keeps, have you seen it peon aurora no i haven't it's so flipping cool dude you pull your weapons out and there's like four or five like orbs float above your character all different size and give you a glow and it's a legendary earring or, or accessory yeah. um but it's it's actually really it's probably one of the coolest cosmetics in the game mm. yeah i'm um, not and we're, they're working on the ring now. The ring is going to be obtainable through raids, in fact. Which, Do you uh, have any idea of what it's... Is there going to be an effect similar to Aurora? Uh, almost certainly, yeah. So, yeah, and the, eventually we'll have, there will be a full set of everything, right? There'll be... It'll pro one will be... I imagine the way it's going to go is that some of them, they'll all be in different game modes. Like, there might be a PvP legendary ring. There might be a world versus world legendary accessory, that sort of thing. Like, and then there'll be a story amulet or something, like a legendary amulet for the story. Like, it will all be full legendary soon, boys. Um, yeah, like, that, that will eventually happen. But it might take a little while. Uh, for example, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the... Um, okay, this, this might, this might uh, raise a few eyebrows. Uh, <laughs> uh fr from the the legendaries that are being added to the game okay are not path of fire content they are from they are legendaries that were supposed to be included in heart of thorns on launch on launch so the whore horn we just got is a heart of yes. thorns legendary. yes that is correct it's not a path of fire legendary there are have there been path of fire legendaries do we have no oh. no That face sums it up, honestly. Is there a new greatsword coming? Oh uh, yeah, there will be eventually. Just... Oh, you don't like it? You don't like eternity? No, I have eternity. I love it. I mean, oh. like, I just, I, I, I die a lot when I use eternity. I keep looking at myself. Yeah. And I look at <laughs> Well, yeah, not not necessarily on launch. Like one of his corrected, but they were supposed to cut. They were supposed to be released with, uh, within the expansion, and that's not really happening. Okay, that that's not happening, um, and it didn't happen. Okay, that, yeah, the on launch thing though, no, it wasn't on launch. It was supposed to ha happen with the story. Like they would release three of them at a time or something. It didn't happen. Okay, feels bad, man. But yeah, they, and they were all supposed to be a lot more complicated as well. Um, have you, well, are you thinking of going for the legendary shortbow? Like the tiger shortbow? Like Chukra and Champawat at some point? I already have Dreamer. Um, so I have uh, Twilight, Eternity, Sunrise, Dreamer, Incinerator, Last Secret Prophecies, and Bifrost. Mm. Uh, two out of mod helped me craft. Actually, I was getting stream sniped last night, and I complained to Blackgate to stop stream sniping me, so they sent me a legendary. Mm. So that was uh, pretty cool, the community. In uh, BDO, people stream snipe you, they just call you racist words and <laughs> docs. So it's pretty cool coming to this game when, you know, I'm telling you, man, like, but this community is, I mean, Peon can tell you, how toxic is BDO, dude? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's awful. <laughs> I mean, like, I remember I went and on stream one day, and I don't know all the EU memes, and they were just spamming Sov Win. You couldn't even type in his chat. It was like a thousand people spamming Sov Win, and it was some EU meme. Huh. Oh, that was a guild a guild to recruit people. <laughs> yeah. So we come to this game and people send me stuff that are nice. It's just crazy. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, people are very friendly here. Well, 
Okay, to kind of to kind of almost come full circle, actually, and particularly on on the raids aspect here. Like, um, uh, en- Envy was talking a little bit about how uh, he didn't even really know what the hell was going on, like Guild Wars raids. Like, what, what? A- and th- this is a really f- interesting phenomenon that we find in ArenaNet. Arena are very loath to promote the more competitive and or hardcore sections of their game right uh a, an outsider player might not even know that raids exist in the game to be honest like they might not even be aware of it they won't know about hard mode fractals they won't really know about what's going on in pvp like i doubt oh, well I'd, I'd certainly like to see alliances be really i i would like to see when alliances come they hammer world versus world really hard i i want to i want to see like all over the twitter all over those social medias guys okay really kind of um uh, let's go world versus world because I think it's such a great game but it's what Guild Wars 2 does extremely well uh, They I think they should really try and bring them back in but that doesn't happen right like it, you don't see world versus world Marketed it's always about story about um, the, the you know cosmetics and stuff like that uh, it, it seems like a, a bit of a mistake not to market like um some of the gamers like, like raids don't really get marketed like world versus world doesn't really get marketed like the pvp stuff how do, how do they how do they currently market i i just know i've seen i follow them on twitter they but don't. i don't actually they don't okay maybe, no. maybe this is why so many people from the like mmo fans think that guild wars 2 is dead because it's literally only advertising story stuff mm. rather than mmo stuff yeah yeah every few months they advertise story sometimes and then uh, yeah. For example, the the ra- the the advertisement for the latest raid wing, which is a uh, hall hall of chains. Uh, the the guy um that was was fe- that you featured in your uh, video PN right with the giant scythe. Um, yeah. The advertisement for that on the Twitter was a blurry screenshot of the house at the start of the raid on low settings. Wow! And unironically. <laughs> So they, do, do they, they need do, to employ someone <laughs> for the marketing? Yeah, do they thing? not do like uh, trailers? Okay, like so. I mean, the game and IP on play before. If there is, there's actually a new content or a new continent area coming out uh, called Dragon, and honestly, it's just more of the same. But they do pretty cool little trailer videos. They fly around the map. I'm sure you can do that in this game. The devs have the power to. Um, they kind of show you some areas. They'll bring up a title of like what the area is. This is the race. These are the monsters. Uh, show you a little clip of the world balls or something, and then cut back and say coming fall 2018 or whatever. Do is does Anet or Guild Wars 2 not do that? And is it even their control or is it their parent company or who's who's calling the shot? Well. It, we, we have some kind of contradicting evidence, really, because, for example, the recent two story trailers for the story have been extremely good, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the trailers for the story content, the, the recent two living story patches, which is Long Live the Lich, uh, and what was the previous one? I don't even know. That yeah, video was sick. That yeah, video was cool. it was really cool, right? It was really cool. But I, I think it would be really awesome if we... Uh, saw that sort of stuff for the the latest raid, the latest fractal. I mean, you do have a little bit for the fractal. We sh- we saw some kind of cool screenshots of 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 some of that, like a bit of a a bit of a trailer for it. Like uh, within the trailer, we saw stuff about the spider. But it's kind of like I feel like it could almost use its own thing in its own right, really, uh, because it they, they clearly spent a lot of time d- designing the fractal. I'm, I'm not. Uh, have you guys played through the the new fractal, the deep stone fractal? No, I have not yet. That's what I was talking. I need to figure out a character to do fractals. On. Yeah, I want to yeah. Learn Hollow Smith. Yeah. Hollow Smith. I, I currently don't have an engineer yet. Mm. You have a revenant. Uh, I have a revenant. Yeah. Kill. Best class in the game, but everyone's gonna hate you. But it's the best. In the yeah. I, I actually took a revenant into Worldly World, and I saw a blob in uh, Pangloss, and I clicked Hammer Five, and I immediately down the scourge, and that that just kind of warms your heart. Yeah. Seeing a scourge die, yeah, it makes you feel yeah, Oh, so. yeah, you like that? Yeah, like killing scourges. I, I think we all do too. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a shame that we don't see that level of of uh, of shilling. Uh, t- to be fair, what would they do that for PvP right now? Like, there's nothing really to do, uh, or for World versus World as well. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, I'd really love to see like trailers, um, a lot of advertising. Like, you know, look, guys, World versus World is back. Alliances are back. You know, like see, yes. like big rewards. You know, prestige, glory, battle. You know that sort of thing. I think that'll be really awesome. But 
for PvP too, right? I, th I think that could be great. Like, we're, look, we're bringing in, uh, say, if they release a new map, like, oh, it's a new map for PvP, guys, like new mechanics, like new spicy mechanics. Or there could be um, when there's the 2v2 tournament, right? Like, let's hype up the 2v2s. There's going to be um, special, you know, there's like a special reward. There's going to be some kind of special. We don't know uh, that much about this sort of thing. Um, with regards to what's actually happening, uh, but like, why you know, are we are we getting some good hype? Like, I feel like there's not hype for the more hardcore elements of the game, and I'm not sure if that's I, I don't know. If like, you don't hype up the hardcore elements of the game, people aren't going to be interested because they'll have nothing to aim for. Mm -hmm. If Great. they Smart. perceive everything to be casual, like yeah. you do everything in a week, you want you want something hardcore. Like even if you used to just do a world vs world trailer, just showing. 100 players running at each other it just gives the idea to people that the game's alive mm. and not dead like in black desert for example even though a lot of the time they release terrible terrible content that absolutely nobody asked for they still like hype the shit out of it even though it's real it's question for 30 dollars yeah exactly i mean like he's not i mean what peon saying is absolutely right like they will bring out a swimsuit that costs twenty nine ninety nine. That is just for cosmetic, and they will have a trailer, and it goes all out. And you know that's coming. It's on their Twitter. It's on their client. It's on the um, front page of the client. It's They'll on have, their uh, like competitions and stuff. Like for example, last year they added a water park to the game. Literally useless content, but they made. Um, I think they did a competition or something where players either made a video or. A, a, screen, a series of screenshots with the guild, right? And they would use that to help promote the game. They had a competition where they got the player base to make a siege video or something, and the winner of that had their trailer that they made for the game um, like released as the official trailer. You remember that, Teapot? The uh, trailers we made for the raid tournament that were literally better than anything they've ever released. Oh, that was that, those were good. And then it, they were posted on Reddit, and the top reply was Chris Cleary saying that he wishes that we could make things like that, but we can't because we had to hack the camera in order for it to wait, be done. Wait, wait, did that? Wait, did he service. say that? Yes, that happened. Oh. He did. Oh. He said, "I've always been a fan of player machinima, but we can't allow that in Guild Wars Two because it violates the the terms of service." Because you have to hook the camera and memory to even access anything like that. What's wrong with that? Why is that? Because you have to get into the memory, and it's spooky, uh. scary skeletons. Yeah. And then there was the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, if if you guys pee on an envy, if you want to see the absolute peak of Guild Wars Two content trailers, go look for the South Sun Cove taxi cab trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. They, oh no. They dressed up, they got real people, like real people. They dressed up the inside of a taxi cab, like a boat with, with like crabs fire. and put sand. Yeah, a taxi cab. They drove it around a city, picked people up, and there were like awkward people driving, like <laughs> turning around the whole time, like so what do you think about Guild Wars 2? Oh, this new I've this new that. lost it, it's it's just like you just look at that and you're just like I'm never going to play this game. That's the first thing you think. And then you think, I feel really bad for the people in the commercial. I don't want to give any more light to the other game, but I'm going to post this in the, the group call. Uh, Pion, or not Pion, um, Teapot, if you want to look at that. This is something that we would always see. Now, the, the NA side wouldn't do this. This is just Korea. This is the Korean team. They would make these videos every week of the large-scale sieges that were happening within... BDO. Now it's only once a week. It's every Saturday. Um, but I'm wondering if I know that Ben came by my stream and said that every now and then, or every week, they do um, like a, they do a live stream to where they go play, like the devs go play. I think that's awesome. I, I encourage way more dev to player interaction. The fact that Ben and the other people come by the stream and talk with us, I've told some of my buddies from BDO, they're like, wait, what? You talk to the dev? Yeah, like we crack jokes. Like, that's unheard of because the devs in that game don't listen at all. So I'm wondering if, like, can ArenaNet do... Actually, I'll post this in chat. For, can, um, you know, they... I think you left. Actually. But can they, um, you know, make a video like that or, you know, a clip of that World v. World stuff? Like, here's, you know, you know, Maguma fighting on, you know, their Alpine borderland at their Tier 3 keep, fending off this 
you know, and just make a little trailer of these awesome fights and then post and say, wow, like World of World actually looks mm. super crazy. I would love to get into that. Because believe it or not, like it's it's not that laggy. It's it's functions pretty good. I'm able to stream on a 34 inch, 34 40 by 14 40 monitor with decent graphics in Worldly World, and you can't do that with almost any other MMO out. Yeah. Uh, when it comes, there used to be a few community initiatives that there was there uh, there's stuff like uh, design a weapon contest. There was also. You had to like make a music video, I think, like so for for the Tower of Nightmares, right? It was there was like uh, or, or something like that. One of a living story episode that people made um, like, uh, like music videos or something like that happens. So, like, it doesn't typically happen. Yeah, dude, the Eve Online, like this is Eve trailer, like Goon damn, squad. holy Goon shit, squad. that is one hell of a trailer, guys. Um, I, I I do feel that Arena are a little bit loath to I, I, I to bring on community stuff onto their official media because i think they're a bit scared that they're, they're i don't know I, they, they they think there'd be they, a lot of work to vet it i guess i suppose they're, like, they're afraid that there are going to be more people like me and that they're going to have to just, no 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 he doesn't exist well like so like if if peon was to say hey guys i'm going to go live with some wizard gameplay you know the black desert twitter would retweet that they would support like their players does the arena net or guild wars 2 Twitter or any of that stuff, like like say you're gonna go live with Tea Time, do they retweet Tea Time or do they not support? Are they not allowed to support? Oh that? yeah, yeah. You, th through the through the partner program, you can get that stuff done. Uh, yeah, you could. You have to. Um, you have to go and uh, yeah. It, 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 partners have the honestly, ability to ask for it. Basically, yeah, yeah. You can, if you want to if you want to get stuff retweeted, there is you can get that stuff done as possible. Yeah. Well, I think also like and hosted I mean, by their official channel. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. All of us, all of us on here talking, you know. Brazil, you, Peon, all of us, we are all content creators and we can kind of, I mean, you you clearly have, we have what, almost a thousand people watching us. So I think also as a content creator, if we can take the responsibility of, you know, hyping it up ourselves, making content, making a command on your stream, making, I mean, shit, Peon puts out, Peon, how many views are you getting on your videos now? I saw one of your videos, it's already like over like a half a million views. Like that's, that's incredible. So we have, I mean, Peon is literally a company. He's a brand. And I'm not trying to like gas him up, but like it's amazing when he makes a video and you see the game's population increase. So maybe we as Guild Wars 2 players, if ANET isn't going to be as aggressive we want them to be, maybe we hype it up and get the response we want to see, you know, create the world we want. Yeah, I, com I, completely, I completely sympathize with that point. I, I think that uh, it, it, the community it's, is fairly strong. It's, you know, it's absolutely not as big as it could be. Like Guild Wars 2 is. No, we're not. We're not that high ranked on Twitch, guys. Okay, I'm not gonna pretend. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to myself. But I mean, for example, BDO right now has three times the viewers. Feels bad losing to BDO. Like, come on, what's going How on there? How international is it, though? I oh, sorry, say again? How international is it? Because if you if you pull apart uh, like a lot of the viewers, that's Russia, that's Europe, that's Korea, that's Taiwan. Yeah, that's... we have. Like, that's Russia, that's Korea. So you're looking at multiple completely different clients. So BDO yeah. is unwrapped under the same umbrella, but their clients are actually completely different. EU and NA are only the same. Russia's different, Taiwan's different, South America's different, different marketing, different money. It's, I mean, I'm talking, there is completely different things in the games that other ones don't get. So it's all under the same umbrella, but it's actually very different games. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 well, the the client that we play is different to the China client, but I think that's yeah. it. Yeah, there's yeah. Everyone, everyone else that's plays in the same censorship. one. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it's basically it's, it's it's the same game. There's just um some slight differences in it uh, the the way it is. Yeah, but yeah, it's just it's just the same. So, yeah, there you go. Can I ask a random question? Do it. Do Do you guys think there'll ever be a Guild Wars three? No. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I reckon we see one more expansion after this, then we'll see an announcement for Guild Wars 3, I would say, yeah. I think they want to kind of escape the limitations of the engine. I think there, I think there is a, there's a lot of frustration with regards to the engine. Like, stuff like uh, mounts w were probably hellishly difficult to implement. Like, implementing gliding in World vs. World was very difficult. Um, Stuff like the physics in some of like the little mini games, like the little um, uh, little adventures. Like there's a thing called Super Adventure Box. Have you guys been? Has chat told you guys about Super Adventure Box? I've not yet. It, it's it's um it's like a you go you go into this 
um, like retro world, right? Like this, you know, it's like eight bit or whatever, right? And you, 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 it's like a normal, it's like an old, old school adventure game, right? Like, um, I guess it's amazing. You, yeah, it, it's kind of cool, it's, right? It, it's amazing. Uh, but they had to kind of close it and then fully fix it because like the engine broke it when they added gliding to the game or something, right? So uh, th there's a lot of frustration with that, I think. So perhaps that's holding them back, and a lot of the problems that we see in Guild Wars Two are actually because of that. Uh, so. Yeah, I would expect to see a Guild Wars 3. Like, Guild Wars 3 is like the avenue to an engine rework, is the way I see it, really. Um, would you is, guys is... like to see a Guild Wars 3? Because after, like, hearing about how long they take to update things, if it is an engine issue, and a, an issue of spaghetti code and stuff, I think maybe that's the only way to fix a lot of things and get a, a good content release schedule. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd love to see Guild Wars 3, personally. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, if that if that is the case, if that isn't the case, and obviously that wouldn't help, but uh, I, I do, I do kind of have a, a hunch. I mean, obviously, I, I don't know shit, right? I don't work for Guild Wars Two. I, I only the only people on the inside could truly give us the insight that we need on this, right? But yeah, I would love to see Guild Wars Three. I'd be on that instantly, especially if they did the same thing they did with Guild Wars One to Guild Wars Two. There's something called Hall of Monuments in Guild Wars One. That means there's kind of a carryover. Ooh. So yeah, if you cool. yeah yeah if you do really if you if you do all the titles or the achievements in Guild Wars One, mm. you get special stuff in Guild Wars Two, right? Uh, the so, fiery great sword. Yeah yeah, so, yeah Someone explained that to me on yeah, yeah so that's yeah. very cool mm. very cool yeah so that would be awesome right especially if that was because like, I wouldn't mind if it wasn't but yeah it would be amazing if that yeah I, I would be very much interested in seeing this some. Um, uh, in seeing the franchise continue, because at the end of the day, guys, I I, I do truly believe that Arena has some incredibly talented devs, and they they, in my opinion, they nail the combat system in particular and the system designs in, in a way that I just don't see other other companies do. I think the combat system is amazing in this game. Like no, it's it's it survives. Guild Wars Two survives because of the way the the game actually plays itself, because of the actual gameplay, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, people put up with the flaws because of the reason of how good it is to actually play. Like the game is fun, right? Like, people put up with like the slightly, you know, slow balancing changes, like the the slow raid releases and fractal releases, because of how much fun it actually is when it happens. Uh, so yeah, I I, I, def I definitely think there would be support for the for the game as well. I think the game is doing well now. Um, all right, with regards to this stuff, um, uh, I think, I think the, a lot of the yeah. stuff you guys talk about, like these flaws. I mean, I've I've played a lot of games. Like, yeah, that every game has its flaws, but I feel a lot of the flaws in this game are very granular compared to some games. To where, I mean, look at what BDO is going through. Entire meta shifts are every Wednesday, like meta shifts, not just oh, this class is different. A class will go from doing ten percent damage to two hundred ten percent damage swaps again so you can't figure out how to play the game because one week this guy comes into your grind spot it's like oh it's just a ninja i'm gonna kill him next week you don't know what hit you and so i feel like a lot of our problems are because I, I don't have them because i don't know them yet but i think a lot of the things that the game is going through are real problems but compared to a lot of, i mean look what happened to bless when bless comes out and my hops on the hype train i had the game uninstalled and refunded before my friends got through the queue i mean that's just a disaster. I think the MMO market is, we're beat up. Like we're, you know, we're hurt a little bit, but I think Guild Wars is doing a really good job. And if they kind of turn up a little bit, you know, have a little more coffee at work. And then if there was an announcement of Guild Wars 3 with the MMO, I don't think WoW Classic is going to do well. I don't think BFA is going to do well. I don't think, I don't think Air is going to do that hot. There's a couple of MMOs out there I'm keeping an eye on, but I just don't believe people are going to do it. I don't think that there's enough stability in mmos and i think guild wars 2's got it so i think if they can figure yeah. out what the special bosses with this dynamic combat system and you know the storytelling is pretty good i mean that joko trailer was awesome and so if they can you know keep hitting these bullseyes and take it on to the future i think you could see a serious success with guild wars 3 or even yeah. further into guild wars 2. i really think if they made guild wars 3 it'd be very successful like if you look at the amount of things that wow has copied mm. in guild wars yeah. 2 over Absolutely. the years I think the Guild Wars devs, if if you look at it from the amount of things that they've had copied off them, they're like the leading innovators in the MMO genre, really. Yeah. Since the game's release. I yeah, I think that's a very fair statement. Uh, actually, uh, the Guild Wars Two, when it comes to the actual tough part of actually having good content, right? They really nail it. Like the raids are great. Like fractals are great. War versus World is great. Like the PvP game mode, I think is very solid. Uh, the combat is great. Like it's uh, it's very Guild engaging. Hall. Guild Hall's 
awesome. Like the fact we built an arena in my guild hall the other day. Yeah, and my, arenas. That's nuts. I have other guilds coming in teach me how to do certain. Other, I mean, like that's it feels personal, and I, I think that's pretty cool to have like my own personal little content place mm. I can do stuff. Where most games you can't do that. You get to go out into a field and or in a, go sit outside ogre or whatever it's called and wow and go for duels against rogues who you hate. Oh, I think there's yeah. a lot of good stuff. Here. Yeah, it, it just feels a shame. Like it, I, I, I say I use this analogy a fair bit. It, it kind of feels like um, arena are at the the wheels of a Ferrari, right? And they just drive it around at twenty miles an hour, like ten miles an hour, even. Right? They have this amazing car, but they don't like show it off to anyone. It just sits in the garage the entire time. You know what I mean? It's um, it, it's this beautiful, amazing work of art. Yet it just it's just gathering dust to a certain extent, right? It's um. Uh, it's it's, Why it's just saying sentence. don't tell him what what, what do i not know uh, I guild halls haven't been updated basically since heart of thorns launch pretty much um the, there is well, no, I'm, I'm, there I'm is new. no I, guild I, team I, yeah i know <laughs> like you yeah. guys are abused i'm the new <laughs> guy coming i'm like i literally got knocked off by a five on a mesmer greatsword and i was like this is cr i'm falling my death in my guild hall like laughing hysterically thinking this is awesome i look over in chat and I'm like lol look at this idiot <laughs> Yeah. So the 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 big problem that I have about Heart of Thorns, I love Heart of Thorns. I love the maps. I love the events. I love a lot of the stuff about it. Like there's just so much that is just oh, I love it. I'll never forget it. Problem with it is that the New World versus World map was a big selling point. They made a huge deal about that. They didn't ask for any input from World versus World players at all in the development process, and they only wanted big streamers to stream it and make it look cool. They had no idea about how World versus World worked. So when it came out on launch, all of the people that actually played World vs. World said, delete this map, take it out of the game, it's awful, we hate it. And so that's what they did. So that was one of the giant selling points of Heart of Thorns that was deleted out of the game because people hated it so much. Stronghold in PvP, you probably have yeah, you probably have no idea that's what that is. Never again. That's a, that's a hard added, no stronghold. That is a they hard added, no. They added Stronghold into the game and made a big deal about it, and they had a bunch of, like, Rando ass hats yeah. coming to play it and show it off. Ah! And they, they, hey! they put it into the game. Nobody played it except the people that win traded up to Legend for like two seasons, and then they just said, We're not supporting Stronghold anymore. So that was the new big thing for PvP. Took it out. PvP, Wolver's World gone. PvE legendaries. They said, We're going to have new legendaries. Come on, guys. This is going to be great. They couldn't finish it because the collections are a mess. They took that out of the game. Guild halls. Guild halls are going to be huge. It's going to Guild Wars One. Guild halls. Everybody wants guild halls. Release guild halls. They haven't touched them since. So this was like almost everything aside from like raids, which raids and legendary armor. That was another thing. Raids and legendary <laughs> armor. These are going to be huge. You're going to love them. It's going to be difficult content. It's gonna do legendary armor is gonna be prestige. Legendary armor takes one year twice to come out, not two years, one year twice. Bear that in mind. It comes out, it's a mess, everybody hates it. There's a disaster. Some idiot gets kicked out of the partner program over it because he makes a video exposing the whole thing. And then you see people three manning Veil Guardian with distortion on Mesmer, and they nerf Mesmer out of the game because they don't want people to actually be able to play it. So you can literally, on launch, Heart of Thorns, they deleted like 70% of the content out of it because people hated it so much. Or it just didn't come in in the first place. Ouch. And then there wasn't Living World for literally a year. So you did the Heart of Thorns story, and then there was no story content for a year. And that was, that was a... Uh... Despite the, the, those that. those times are behind us though. Like the content flow is a little more steady now. That's for sure. That was um, a really good rant. Like I learned a lot. Yeah. Like, a well, all right, all right guys. Journey. All right. Let, let's I, not. I, you know, I let... can go back. I can go back to 2011 oh, before no. the game even started, oh. and I can give you a detailed history of everything that's happened. Let's not. Let's not color the opinions of <laughs> too much of everyone here. It's not. It's not that bad, guys. Okay. Uh, oh, it's but, not. It's not. It's not. Uh, so I, I will to kind to. to, to, to kind of move a little bit away from that topic. one of the big frustrations i think the player base has is a massive lack of communication from the developers uh, basically we have absolutely no idea when anything is coming right alliances could be like next month or next year right i i, I don't know like the, the next raid i am terrified i i legitimately thought 
even though there was no announcement, like, it, this should tell you something, right? I thought even though there was no announcement at all, the raid might have been in this previous patch, right? That could have happened. That actually could have happened, right? I, I assumed the Fractal was going to have a hard mode. They did actually confirm on Reddit, not officially, that there wasn't going to be a hard mode, right? Weird. Um, but we have no idea when stuff is coming, really. Like, uh, it, it's just... I don't know. It, it's a bit... It's just a little bit sad, unfortunately. And I, I, I believe that is... It does cause animosity in the community, right? To to the... um towards the developers, right? And and they, they get a lot of unwarranted shit for it, really, because they're just not allowed to say anything about it, unfortunately. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how you guys feel about that kind of communication policy, but basically whenever we ask something, the, the devs just will say it will be ready when it's ready. Like, But it, it could be... Or, or they just yell at you on Twitter. That happens too. Yeah, well, I mean, look how that turned out for them, dude, okay? Like, you know, um, not so well, huh? But, um, you know, it, it, it feels really bad, and I, I really understand people's frustration when we don't know when the next Raid Wing is coming out. People have been waiting for seven months already, right, since, um, since November, okay? Since the last piece of Raid content. Raid progression. Like, the PvE hardcore scene is basically, like, melting, right? Everyone's dissolving. Like, the guilds, the guilds are eating each other. You know, they're actually eating each other, right? They're merging, they're fusing, everything is going to shit, basically. Basically, and, and yeah, people will come back, right? But it, it's still, the lack of information causes people just to kind of... <sighs> go crazy. Go, go crazy and, and kind of yeah. quit, quit the game or... or you know that's i've lived yeah. in bdo that yeah. we all have one map they would they would install the expansion you would see it you could you could glitch into it and it wouldn't come out for seven months you could yeah. see the new you could see the new area and you could i don't know <clears throat> i don't know if that's just an mmo flaw we have now but i think um if mmos can get someone or some way to you know segue and connect with us like what's coming how when's it coming or you know at least Give us a little something to you know to give a trailer right now for the next raid or even pictures. Just you know, spoon feed us a little. Oh, here's here's a little something. It, it goes so far. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, for, for example, we they we had some vague. There was an AMA about the the content, and we vaguely we got some very vague statements on this. They said like we're gonna link the raid and fractal cadence in with the living story, right? Like this was a bit of a blow. This is already a bit of a. Ah, ah. Right, so that means we basically get a raid every six months, or and or, and a fractal uh, alternating, right, between every six months. So two fractals, two raids a year. Okay, awesome. But the thing is, I don't even know if that's true. Like, we don't know if that's confirmed. Um, I would love to have it confirmed. We, we I did actually set, we did actually ask in the thread, didn't get answered unfortunately. Uh, but uh, even just knowing that would be good enough for me. Like, if it was okay, we get a we get two raids a year. Okay, if I knew that one hundred percent that that was going to happen, we're going to get two raids a year. Okay. But we don't. We, we don't, right? And and uh, I, I don't doubt that alliances will eventually come. Uh, but uh, And we are actually seeing some good communication to alliance. Like, big shout out to, to the World vs. World team, to Ben P uh, and Raymond. Uh, big shout out to those guys who, who are, are, are writing posts about this uh, on, on their official, our official website. That's great. And that's awesome. I'd love to see more of that for every game mode, though, right? Okay, for every game mode. That would be amazing if we had more of a roadmap. Because I genuinely believe that the community uh, would be much less frustrated uh, with the development of the game if if there was a more clear understanding of the roadmap of the game. It is generally not even so much the cadence. In, in my opinion, the cadence is actually, yeah, it, I would love it to be quicker, but it's fairly solid, right? Content every three months, it's two to three months. That's fairly good for an MMO, if you ask me, considering what you get, right? But it's the lack of knowing that like, we don't know what's coming. That the, the, the fear of the unknown is what frustrates people. Uh, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. I yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Peon, do you, do, would you want to? To kind of go on that, that kind of idea. What's what? What are your well, thoughts on the, that kind of communication and release? In at least the, the, releases? the uh the narrative and story team's been really good with feedback and critique and communication in general. I think we all we all need to <laughs> to applaud that. <laughs> That's Living World season five. Uh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's that's certainly the case. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I, I, well, as 
as I understand it, well, I guess it's just as bad in, well, not just as bad, but I mean, I guess even worse in BDO than if it's like, you don't even hear anything for like seven months. I mean, yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> so I'm cool with like, yeah, the management team and I'll ask them stuff and they give me these like colorful political kind of like misdirected answers. And I'm just like, bro, just, just, just be real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just go home. You know, he's just going to be like, I signed a paper where I can't tell you I don't know anything. That's all it is. Like they don't know anything. Because, like, they don't play the game. Like, so there's something called Red Battlefield, which is our only arena map, three and a half years. Only one map, PvP, one map. They just recently got updated to give you silver before you just wasted your time in there. I asked them, I was like, are we going to get another RBF map? The person writes back, what is RBF? Didn't know the acronym for their own game for three and a half oh years. And I was God. like, <laughs> it's Red Battlefield. And they're like, oh, oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure we <clears throat> we look into that. And like, they just—I was an official partner. I asked all these questions. I, I, I re reached out to the community. I never got a single one answer. Not I one. So one. it's just a joke. And so, like, that's—I think I've come. I come. From, I'm, I'm abused. I'm beat up. I'm hurt. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> I had fun. But coming to Guild Wars Two and like, ah, there's so much to do for me. It's a new player. Now, I guess you guys mm. as veterans, there's a lot, and that's why I think that like. The other week we had that no down state, which I don't think that's great for World of World. That was pretty cool. Yeah, a fun event. Like, like you that. walk out yeah. of spawn and all of a sudden a staff thief yeah. tricks you for 20k and you are oh. gone. It's like, I, oh, I, was, I, was, I, was winning, I was winning 1v5s with Pistol Pistol Thief for the whole weekend. <laughs> Brazil, Brazil on oh, fire is the new, so, the new it thief was, name. It was, so it was good. pretty cool though. So like, I think that kind of throws a little spice in the mix and it stirs the pot. And I think that if Ben's listening and, you know, the other people, it's like, think of other ways, you know, go into frat, change it up. We have a great canvas. Keep painting. You know? It's just, I don't know. I'll, yeah. I'll say this too. Um, Black Desert Online has it a lot worse than we do in Guild Wars 2. Coming from me, maybe that means something else. Uh, Black Desert Online isn't even is light years better than neopets and people that still play neopets let me tell you let me tell you about that if you want the worst possible experience with any game ever oof, go open up firefox get out your uh, little flash player module and go play neopets and you'll see what hell looks like let me tell you there's <laughs> one there's one one person that communicates with the entire community in a, in a specific message board at specific times, and they actively, as the thread gets longer and people ask questions, they delete things out of it because they don't want to answer it. It's just... <sighs> <laughs> you know one game that does communication really well, like one MMO? I mm. think old, old School RuneScape mm. did a fantastic job. Yeah. They actually poll the players. Yeah, on new features and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and then they do, like, Q&As on their YouTube channel, like, most weeks. They do trailers, they do, um, I think they do, like, semi-guides, stuff like that. Pretty yeah. good. No, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, the the that's what I think that's probably a part of why um, old school RuneScape does so well. Like, it does incredibly well on Twitch, right? Because of the way the community yeah, it's still is still very popular. Yeah, it's like yeah, sixty k players. Yeah, I think it's more popular than BDO actually on NA and EU. Mm, yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's a good reason why why the game is pretty. It's very healthy, right? Like, and there's a lot of new content. Like, new stuff gets added to old school RuneScape, right? Like that that is yeah. so cool to me. That's so cool to me. That's the case. Um, uh, and yeah, the, the 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 devs are the devs are really really great. I mean, they did, they did used to actually do, they did used to poll the community for Guild Wars two. There were some polls for World vs World, actually. I think. Um, and that. That went, that went, I think, went pretty well. I think. Um, there were, for example, um, there was a vote that you used to be able to duo queue in um, in PvP at all ranks. Now yeah. you can, now, and there was a poll on like to how to change that, right? Because uh, it, it turns out that there were some players who would duo queue where they're really good, and they would have like a ninety percent win rate uh, in in duo queue. So there was a poll, and now you can only solo queue if you're above platinum two, uh, right? But it, there was, you know, and, and uh, it, maybe that we would do another one. Maybe people would vote differently if that happened again. 
But yeah, I think that sort of developer interaction with the community uh, is not only great for the community and engages the player base and gets people invested in the game, like feeling like they have d very direct influence over stuff, uh, but it also, you know, of course, works out very well for the game, right? Because it, it, it gives, it sometimes works out in the favor of the player. Sometimes the players can uh, want something and then maybe it doesn't work out so well. But, you know, I think a lot of the time it um it can be really helpful for the uh for the players to have access to something like that to try and you know gauge the gauge their their opinions on the game right and see see how that kind of works out right so yeah it's 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 something that old school runescape does very well is communication 100 percent uh but uh, yeah I, w I would love to see i would love to see the the, the developers um kind of get in there i mean the reason why they haven't and maybe you've heard this maybe you haven't is because there have been several uh, I, people in this community tend to love drama okay they love drama they love controversy they love stirring they love memes okay so on occasions where arena has tried to reach out or when or when ArenaNet has not delivered quite how the players wanted, there have there has been, shall we say, back backlash. Okay, right, uh, and this has kind of caused ArenaNet to not want to make promises in particular, um, because when they have promised stuff, there, there was a guy who. Um, uh, who who, you, who was who used to kind of be the face of the company called Colin Johansson. He works for he works for a uh, Amazon now, uh, but um, he he was like the hype guy, and he really hyped Heart of Thorns. Like this, I imagine this was probably kind of a bit of a <laughs> there was a bit of a, a, a nail a nail in the coffin for him. Like he really hyped up Heart of Thorns and said, yeah, like there's content, there's gonna be big content, boys, and everyone loved him. He was a big meme. His smile was amazing, and then Heart of Thorns came came around and like, oh boy. Oh boy, uh, and that kind of like derailed. The hype train was so intense, right? But then it just completely derailed. So they they moved away from that approach a bit, all the way to the, the other side, right? Like you could kind of say it was a bit of an overcompensation, I suppose. But yeah, like, people were um, yeah, three biomes, guys. Each map has three biomes, okay? But yeah, people go. I mean, that's kind of true, honestly. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I am raving. That's kind of true. It is. It is true, really. Actually, it, each map is very complicated in, in Heart of Thorns. That's not a fair criticism, really. But um, yeah, they they've moved away from that, and that's kind of where the communication kind of stopped. Um, and yeah, I think that probably should change. That really ought to change, uh, in my opinion. Um, but uh, I don't know. That that's that's just like my opinion, man. What can I say? Um, but I I don't know. I guess it's not too different in other MMOs either. So I, I, I'd say we got it good, guys, okay? That's what we've learned, okay? I have learned today, we've all learned today. We've got it good here in Guild Wars 2. Nice. I mean, I really think you guys do. I mean, seriously. Like, imagine no. playing a game where you grind for a month, and in two seconds, all that work is gone, and now yeah. you are a month behind. Yeah. That's good. That's nice. Welcome to BDL. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I will tell you what, guys. I think uh, that'll about do it for tea time. I think that we've kind of covered everything. So, we have reached the part of the show where it's everyone's favorite. Okay, the end. Wait, no, wait, oh, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, that's not quite right. No, what am I saying? It's time, guys, to break out the old shilling. Okay, guys, time for the shilling. So, let us start with our wonderful guests here. Uh, in the top right, okay, we have finally seen the green screen. It is Envy, aka Enviously TV. <laughs> Give a, you got any shout outs for yourself or anything in general? Let us know. Like, where can we find you? What are you up to these days? Lay it on us. Uh, come by the stream. Uh, we've grown a guild on CSROs, all the guilds left, and now we've started a uh, like 350 man guild out of nowhere doing World v. World almost every stream. We're trying, we're in T1 right now. We're trying to. Hang with Blobgate, but uh, it's not going so good right now, but we're in second, so if you want to see some worldly world or see me be bad at Thief and SPP, come on by. I'll teach you, Thief. I'll teach you the one true build and you will be God. <laughs> Is it Pistol Pistol? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make like, a good assert. Let, let, let me just describe some, some Pistol Pistol. There, there's even, even more meme to it if you really want to go hard. Big thing, first of all, Berserker Amulet with Infiltration Runes. It's just max damage. Infiltration Runes, whenever you get low on health, you stealth automatically. It's just instant. So you're just like, oh, I'm going to run, and you're gone. Play with Shadow Arts. 
and you increase your stealth duration, there's another trait in Shadow Arts that stealths you at the same health threshold as the Infiltration Runes. So you get hit, you just pop somebody, maybe they hit you and you think, oh no, well you're in stealth for 10 seconds and they can't do anything about it and you just walk off. <laughs> it's the best build in the game. The best build in the game. Check it out, check it out. Thank you. <laughs> Well, no, but thank you for having me on here. Tea time yeah. was awesome. I was yeah, with this. Was thank great. you so much for coming on, dude. Absolutely, it was an awesome show. And of course, in the top left, it is the Slayer of Bless Online. Okay, <laughs> the murderer, the savior of Guild Wars Two. Okay, it is the Lazy Peon. Okay, I'm pretty sure most people know who you are, but for a reminder and some more details. Where can we find you, and what kind of content do you create on the internet? Well, nowadays I mostly do, like, MMO video stuff. I sometimes stream, but not too often because YouTube's, like, the main source of income. So I do MMO first impressions. If an MMO's trash, I will uh, tear it to pieces. If it's, uh, if, it, if it's had a good try, I'll, I'll be a little bit kinder. If it's if it's good, I'll tell you it's good. But, uh, honest stuff, really, and that's on YouTube. Just type in the lazy peel, and it should pop up. And that's uh, that's about it. All right, and then our final guest. It is Brazil, aka Ghostly Infusion, the creator of the Infiltrator Rune Meta, and <laughs> the Bait Lord. Oh, what are yeah, you up to? I'm I'm the ghost of content past. You can find me in Canox instance in South Sun Cove with the yellow flower or the molten facility that was deleted back in 2013, I guess. Uh, basically, I just, I'm, I'm the bad man. I'm the person that Arena Net doesn't like and they don't like people like me around, so that's why I stay and play the game. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just the, 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 big bad, the big bad wolf of Guild Wars 2. Okay. Well, there you go. You can find links uh, to all of those, of course, beneath the stream, and I'm sure you can find them on your own. I'm sure we have a very intelligent and uh, not inept chat here, okay? Adept would be the best way to put it, of course. Uh, but, of course, then, finally, it's me, guys. If you have enjoyed this tea time and what a show it has been, then why not follow the stream? Why not just do it? Just do it, guys. Hit the follow button. You know, come back and watch every day. No life. Just do it. Watch the entire time. AFK. Leave the computer on. Pretend it's BDO. Okay? Just do it. Okay? And of course, wait, yeah, they want you to follow Emma Winks on Twitter, okay? Like, you can follow Emma Winks on Twitter if you want, okay? Unfollow him though, okay? And then subscribe to everyone here. Subscribe to the stream on Twitch, guys. <laughs> get the emotes. Get the memes. Collect it all up. And then, yeah, support all these amazing content creators, guys. Delusion Elitist. It's all good stuff. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. You know where to find us, and we will, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys around, I'm sure. Like, we're, yeah, we're not going anywhere, unless something really bad happens, but, you know, that's probably not going to happen. Hopefully, unless Arena Net kills us all. Uh, but, you know, they won't do that yet. We haven't shit told the game that much. But, yeah. Thank <laughs> you guys for watching. You. <laughs> right, thank you, T5. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks so much, us. guys. Okay, really appreciate you guys coming on uh, a really interesting show. And yeah, as you can see, we have set up the raid. We are invade someone else's stream, so go spam the hell out of that, okay? I want those teapot animes in there, guys. Subscribe to get your teapot anime today, guys. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my wonderful guests. And you guys have a good day. See you guys later. And thanks for watching once again. Cheers, guys. Later.